Yeah. That's going to be a hell of a stream. The EDP death stream. I could buy one of them cupcake costumes. <laughs> and stream oh as the cupcake. <laughs> Look, guys. Uh, I, don't I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> why? Why is the why is the cupcake Mickey Mouse? Okay, so we'll just go over this situation. I want to watch the Tim Cast video because this is the first one I saw that came up. Major allegations against Chris Tyson of the Mr. Beast crew. The transgender member is being accused of grooming a minor with explosive videos dropping, not only showing Chris Tyson allegedly sending sexualized messages to a minor in a, in a, in a, in a Discord chat, so it's not, I, I, I don't believe they're direct messages, but also commenting on posts on X. I, 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 this is hard for me to say, it's so disgusting, but requesting graphic adult images or uh, 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 drawings of children in adult doing adult acts the individual this person uh, chris tyson was tweeting at and 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 engaging with had made lewd drawings of seven-year-olds engaging in adult activities and that is shot this is shocking now apparently someone from the mr beast crew says jimmy mr beast himself knew about all of this i don't know this is just being, what's what's being reported and, and the rumors. So I think we should break these down as they're very serious. A lot of people, of course, are saying when you look at Chris Tyson, who is this who is now transgender. I don't know what name they go by. I, I guess it's Chris Tyson. I thought that was his name the whole time. Um, a lot of people are saying they're not surprised based on the the, 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 the posts on social media appropriately with a minor. That's one way of putting it. I think grooming is a better way to describe the allegations. Chris Tyson has recently been accused of sending inappropriate and sexual texts to a minor. The controversy has garnered a lot of traction on social media after screenshots of the alleged text sent by the Mr. Beast crew member were shared by YouTuber Prism42 in a video titled Chris Tyson talked inappropriately to a 13 year old about a month ago. Clips from the 10 minute long video have been going viral on X after being shared by Drama Alert. Prism42's videos claim that Chris Tyson met a 13 year old during a giveaway organized by Mr. Beast's team. Another YouTube video by Brion has also gone viral, containing a Discord screenshot of, a certain, of certain sexual jokes that were made by Chris Tyson and sent to the minor when he was 15 in 2019. Ah, that's crazy. Chris Tyson from Mr. Beast is accused of talking to minors. Two videos of the last 30 days outlined an alleged sexually inappropriate relationship with a minor that started when the minor was age 13, with plans to meet up with the same minor at age 16. Wow. So uh, here, here we go. This is a... Uh, Chris Tyson allegedly joking about selling nudes with the minor, according to YouTuber Prism42. In addition to claiming that Chris Tyson contacted the minor when he was 13 years old, Prism42's YouTube video also talked about Mr. Beast member making problematic jokes directed at the kid on social media. A particular screenshot from X back when it was Twitter has garnered significant backlash as Chris appears to be joking about sending nudes to the minor in the, uh, in the same. The alleged post from Chris Tyson from 2018 reads, I posted some fire nudes for you. Please no share. Was it, was it a joke? Look, I don't know what they were saying to each other or sending to each other, but the idea so that just because he says that publicly, it's a joke, is a ridiculous, ridiculous assumption. An adult man told a, a child online that he sent nudes to him and not to share them. That in oh, yeah. One other thing I should want to point out here. Yeah. The way how Tim Pool was doing the whole the, it's a joke excuse. Yeah. For Chris Tyson, it's not an excuse. For Ricky Berwick, it is. Because um, when has Ricky Berwick actually like sexted or even like joked sexually with a minor? Never. Everything that Ricky Berwick has done was a fucking joke. There is like no real seriousness to it. Like the man does I mean, something called crippled news right now. <laughs> yeah, like that's his whole account. It's literally just to be like, you know, cripple and to shit on other people who aren't. Yeah. Like, you know, who do fucked up shit. Like yeah. Chris Chan, for instance. Do you really think that he supports motherfucking if he talked to Chris? Yeah. Like Jesus Christ. Like, hey Chris Chan, let's do a collab. I know you fucked your mother. I'm in support of it, blah, blah, blah. That's lyrics' line of fucking thinking. Yeah. That's Smaggle's kind of thinking because they're fucking retarded. Right. Like, can we just admit too that like that's extremely inappropriate to be sending to a teen? Wait a yeah. minute. Like, wait, wait, a minute. Wait, a minute. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hindsight. Hindsight here. 
Wasn't there something recently with Rose Malay coming back around? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't didn't lyrics platform Rose Malay several times? Yes. Yeah. So by that logic, isn't lyrics platforming somebody who's doing such shit? Yes. Yeah. Because I think the only one that really pushed on Rose was Chud. Yeah, he was. I mean, lyrics respond to these allegations of you supporting Rose Malay. Yeah. Yeah, it was literally somebody, like, I remember when he started coming back and everything, and, like, that was one of his go-to people to call in to try and cultivate content. Yeah, and don't don't say, don't say use the excuse, oh, it was just a joke, bro. ...warrant <laughs> a criminal investigation and search the messages of these individuals and for whatever platform they were using. As mentioned, Prism42 is not the only YouTuber to bring forward allegations against Tyson. A video dated July 22nd from Brion titled... Chris Tyson got caught talking to a minor. It's bad. Seems to be the reason why the accusations are finally attracted oh, yeah. to wide audience. One other example yeah. that commentary all knows about, and they're looking at it straight in the face and turning a blind eye to because of it's Chris Tyson, Mr. Beast. Maya Moore. <laughs> and all of her yeah. fucked up comments related to pornography and children and yep. leaving their private parts in a bloody mess and everything yeah the fact that she was trying to recruit uh kids as young as 16 to do only fans because fuck you to daddy and all that other fucking horse shit yeah you're really gonna tell me you're willing to bury maya moore but not chris tyson fuck yeah. yourselves the video has over half a million views within a day of it's being posted online i i watched some of this the, uh, apparently this guy, Chris Tyson was following someone, an account. I don't, I don't remember the name. I think it might be in the story, a guy who draws children engaging in adult activities. And this guy was commenting like, please give me these things and stuff like that. Fear Buck says Chris Tyson is being exposed. So we, we, we know that they've said it 30 times. The 30 minute long video contains several instances of Chris Tyson contacting the minor with Brion, raising concerns over the interactions. A particularly relevant clip has garnered a lot of attention after it was shared by ex-user yeah, Fear Buck. This is another was... thing. I never thought that Brion would be mentioned in a Tim Pool video. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's even doubly funny because, you know, Kumo. Yeah. <laughs> well, what a world we live in. <laughs> no, no, Brion's a bad guy. He he had he was sexting with a seventeen year old. Yeah, when he was eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> High school context. Yeah, yeah, fucking cutter boy over there. Yeah. <laughs> now hang it up on your wall. How did that go again? <laughs> <laughs> the least amount of damage. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. I pulled up the Brion video. That's what I was doing really quick. So we could watch that after this. Screenshot sent, sent by the minor who was 15 at the time. is. This was actually in my fucking playlist to, like, get up to speed on this shit. So. Yeah, I, I sent I, you this one in the group chat, I think. You might have, yeah. By the minor when he was 15 titled, I got a weird snap from Chris. And shows a snap sent by Chris Tyson making an adult joke. Here is what Brion says about it in the YouTube video. He said, um, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to repeat what it says. It's, it's gross. It's not, it's not for kids to hear. It said something along the lines of, um, uh, how can I phrase this? Uh, I'll just, climaxing for America with a face, with a strange face. That, that's basically what he wrote. He sent to a child. Why in any context would you send something like that to somebody you most likely know is 15 years old while you were 22 years old? I have a feeling people are going to argue that it's a joke or something by Chris. Chris is a funny guy. He's the meme guy. But this right here is not a joke that you make to somebody who is seven years younger than you and who is a minor. Fact. If you're an adult, you do not send. It is illegal to send that kind of stuff to children. I, 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 look, assuming it's true, it's all allegations. I don't know where those things come from. Whatever. My understanding is that it is a crime to send to children sexually explicit messages. Period. And that's, a, that's what the allegations are. Readers should know that the minor in question, who is now 20, has refuted these claims in a series of posts on X, where he absolved Chris Tyson of any blame. He also publicly claimed that he was not the victim in the scenario. Doesn't mean anything. If a 23-year-old teacher sleeps with a 15-year-old student at a high school, the student may be like, I enjoy it. It's fine. Doesn't matter. 
you are a minor and you are not capable of understanding the ramifications here. There was one uh, story that went viral a while ago. It was like a 30 something. You know, I will give it to him for having that stance. That seems to be like a brave stance right now. Like yeah. to actually well, say mean, that. That's ridiculous in my opinion. You have to think he's a normie. He's not like a he he's not like a YouTube brand. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, he's like the politics sort of like yeah. moral outrage brain. So like a lot of the takes he has are like what you would talk to a Expect. normal person. Yeah. Yeah, he's like he's like the good version of Destiny. <laughs> But he said that he's, he, was, he was raped by his teacher, a female teacher who was attractive, when he was in high school. And he sees all these stories from people talking about how lucky he must have been. And he said at the time, he didn't understand why it was such a big deal. And he, as he got older, the psychological damage he was suffering from this became more and more apparent to him. This is why it's illegal. Oh, hold up. I got another story to bring up because this happened like back in 2018. Uh, back when, like, the whole Me Too movement was just, like, getting its legs a bit. Like, it was slowly forming. But um, there was a story by the Honey Badgers who brought up about this teacher who basically raped one of her students, like, had sex with them, but it would be considered, like, statutory rape. Oh. And she got pregnant, and the courts ordered the victim of the statutory rape to pay child support. What? Once he turned 18. What? Yeah. Yeah, no, yes. that's kind of fucked. That's fucking absurd. Yeah, that that's like how fucked up our justice system is to a certain extent. But it does show like, you know, like there are some wacky and wild cases that you could absolutely apply to an extreme extent to Chris Tyson and say that, yeah, he needs to fucking go. Holy shit. Chris did nothing wrong. What's actually disgusting is you guys twisting things and making me a victim says the minor in a post. Chris Tyson has yet to publicly address the situation on social media, and viewers expect Mr. Beast to also make a public statement about the issue now that it's become widely discussed online. Drama Alert, of course, has the post here where you can see... This ain't true. And this screenshot is Chris Tyson talking one-on-one -on -one with him. And at this point, he would have been 16. And here we go. Here is the picture of them meeting up together... I'm going to censor his face, and as you can see right there, there, there's Carl right there, there's Chris Tyson right there. Chris Tyson is talking to this guy since... The allegation right here from this guy is that this is the minor in question. So it's been reported that he met up with this kid, or that, uh, that they met up when they were 13. I think, I think the story is, and again, could be wrong, these are all allegations. Uh, the, the allegation is that he met, he met the kid at a, at a Mr. Beast thing when the kid was 13, joined a Discord with him, and started posting edgy jokes, they call it. I don't know. There's them meeting up together. We have this from Drama Alert. Jake the Viking, who I guess worked for Mr. Beast, I don't know, knew about the alleged allegations. Alleged allegations. It's just about the allegations. So they're not alleged. People are alleged. Are, 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 yeah, are, people oxymoron are stating these right allegations there on Keem's part. Of Chris Tyson talking to a minor. He says, Jimmy knew. Wow. Absolutely wild. Keemstar says, Mr. Beast contacted me direct, uh, connected me directly to Lava, the alleged Chris Tyson groomed victim. Lava, I was not groomed by Chris Tyson. Lava, I did not meet Chris Tyson by myself. I meet Chris and the Mr. Beast crew with my family present. Lava, I ran a Discord with Chris Tyson when I was 13, and edgy, inappropriate jokes were said. That's it. That proves it. That confirms it. Yeah. If he was making these statements about climaxing to a child, my, I, I, I believe that's illegal. Um, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, yeah, criminally lewd behavior, making sexual comments to children. It's illegal. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to pull these stories up. They're very, but you can Google this stuff yourself. A man was sentenced to, uh, to jail for making sexual comments to a, to a, uh, how old was the girl? I just, it's just on, it's just on NBC. A 26 year old man made sexual comments to a, a, an underage girl, and he was arrested for it. They don't say the age of the girl, just that, that it appears she's underage. I mean, I, I just Googled if, and this is absolutely wild, Mr. Beast is basically sending uh, uh, these comments to Keemstar being like, no, no, everything's fine. The 13-year-old was having fun. They were just jokes. He's not groomed. Wow, man. This is absolutely wild. Absolutely wild to see.
Quote, uh, one person responded to Keem saying, I was not groomed. Quote, I was 13 and edgy, inappropriate jokes were said. That's literally grooming. Yep. The purpose of grooming is to push a kid in a certain direction when, they're, when their brains are still forming and they're not capable of understanding. It's an older man, a popular, prominent YouTuber, this kid looks up to, sending him sexual jokes and making sexual comments, sending him nudes. From the Mr. Beast subreddit, Someone posted, I don't know what to believe anymore, Ava. Lava says, this is the guy, the, the victim, the, the, the grooming victim. These videos are massive lies and twisting the truth. Ava never did anything wrong and just made a few edgy jokes. I was never exploited or taken advantage of. Can you do me a favor and comment on these videos and tell them to stop spreading lies? The situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online. I'm not a victim of anything being claimed in these videos or at all. You are. You've admitted the messages are real. An adult was sending sexual messages to you. If that's true, these aren't allegations, it's a fact. In the Mr. Beast subreddit, they're, they're actually talking about how the mods are deleting all these posts, not letting people talk about it. And some of the comments are like, dude, it doesn't, this is crazy. One person says, uh, a lot of the claims are basically like, yo, he, he should not have been, look, here, here we go. Being in constant contact and chatting and snapping an unrelated 13-year-old edgy jokes while you're an adult is extremely weird, not to mention that, all, that almost victims, I think he meant all victims, sadly protect their abuser as they're basically conditioned to do it. This whole thing is just disturbing, and anyone with a proper head on their shoulders would have never gotten in the situation in the first place. Maybe don't go message, maybe don't message minors if you don't want that kind of trouble. One person said, apparently the edgy jokes were sexual jokes from what I believe. That's the problem. Someone re responds. This is the Mr. B separate, by the way. When you were in college and joking with a 13-year-old about sending him your nudes, that isn't normal banter. Honestly, it's a good thing that people are questioning that because even if the situation is 100% joking, it should be acknowledged because there are indeed people soliciting and sending sexual photos with minors. So the defense is, one other person says, he wasn't you know, physically touched but texted inappropriately while he was underage. Yeah. This is just me from, like, what I've gathered listening to people who have actually investigated pedophiles before. Like, actual cops, not, yeah. like, internet people. This tactic right here where he's quote-unquote joking about sending nudes to a minor, yeah, that isn't, in the mind of a pedophile, a joke. That's called testing the waters to see if they're yeah. open to the idea. Yeah, it's either they, they, a lot of them tend to either default to I was kidding and joking or I was trying to teach them. I was yeah, educating. I mean, you, could look at, you could look at any, like, to catch a predator or any stings like that. Like, it was just jokes. It was funny. Ha ha. Yeah. Like, I, I was never going to do anything. And then they'd be like, well, why are you here? You yeah, seem to be is... good on it. Like, yeah, because this is like one of the arguments for the power of suggestion and why people end up following for, falling for it more so than not is because once you throw that idea out there and you take it back like haha i was just kidding it's like it, it throws like a genuine question into the kid's head and they don't have like the mental faculties to reason about it like was he actually being serious or was he joking like he says you are opening the fucking door with that suggestion to this kid priming them to accept it because like oh if you didn't get the joke the first time well, he's not going to talk to me again. He's, uh, I won't be part of the in crowd. And I'm a kid and I want to be friends with this guy. He's a really cool dude. I really like him. I want, you know, his attention. That's what that move was. It wasn't a fucking joke. He was, was priming like a, that kid up. It was the grooming. It was literally like sort of preparing him him to sort of like engage in this sexual yeah. nature, like a sexual relationship. Yeah. And you know, kids will go along with the, like, you know, they'll talk big. It's like, Oh, oh. I was like outside. And it's like, say like, Oh, I got an AR 15. What do you got? And he's like, Oh, I got a Glock 19. And he's like 13 years old, not able to own it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a Glock 45. Yeah. Because <laughs> like completely like over, over the top. That's like, they just think big. I have a desert eagle. Done. Yeah. Right? It's because kids it's because kids are so simple minded. They yeah. want to be accepted. And pedophiles prey upon that acceptance or exactly. that wanting of acceptance. That's why exactly. Chris Tyson is a fucking pedophile. Yeah. 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 It, it, I mean it fits. It tracks with all of like the uh, the sketchy like sort of nature of like the way they had their conversations. Well the sketchy nature of the conversations, the art. 
the There's multiple victims the surrounding yourself everybody. yeah surrounding yourself with kids like the is too opportunistic at the very least yeah like at at the very People, least like it's insane again, that they allowed allowed someone that fucked up that predatory to be around kids and turned a blind eye to it yeah and again to bring up the michael jackson comparison People were twisting the fucking truth and meaning of certain words in order to make the case for him because they know that's what pedophiles do. Yeah. So just for like all these fucking internet hacktivists going and saying like, oh, it was edgy jokes or like, well, we don't know the full story or that this is team sports is absolutely blatantly fucking retarded. The people are sweeping up for it or not even wanting to comment on it. Because they just had Dr. Disrespect and they know they went into the fucking well on that one. They're not willing to go on this one. Yeah. It, it, it's all fucked. Yeah, it really is. And it's and it's like you, you see like all of the like the moralization of it from certain people. Like, you know, it's okay or whatever. It's gross. It's it's really fucking gross. Yeah, and like here's the thing. I mean, I'm not blaming the trans community for one bad apple. I will blame them for trying to cover up for a bad apple. Yeah. Because you are actively participating in it, thinking that this is some kind of fucking, um, what's the word? Um, Discrimination? Uh, like a... No, 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 no. Like a group of people that are kind of like a hive mind that are built up into like a pyramid of t- uh, sorts. Oh. Um, um... There's, there's a specific term for it that people always use for monolith monolith that's what it was yep because people would use that same argumentation for when it came to racism and how you can't judge like one you know bad black person's actions for like the entirety of the race yeah however you can't use that as a fucking defense no it's the inverse of that same fucking argument you are saying that yes trans people all together are a fucking monolith yeah that this is an approachable topic. And I don't think it's, it is like, I was literally saying into Belinda in chat, like, cause Belinda's like, are, are you guys dead naming them? And I'm like, no, no, no. As far as I know, their account, everything that I've seen, even from them, they are referred to as Chris or Ava, Chris or Ava. Like, so they're using all of these names. So like, I feel fine using all of these names. I don't feel like I'm dead naming or anything like that. I wouldn't be disrespectful and I'm not going to be disrespectful just because it's an easy cop out. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same thing that even Christian allows. Like you could still refer to him as Christian because he also uses that even though he goes by Christine Weston Chandler. Yeah. Yeah. With it's just one of those things that it's like, you know, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit there and misgender Chris. I don't like them. I don't. I think they're an abhorrent fucking person. And I think that, you know, just looking at the shit between what we've looked at with Mr. B statement, this video, and then I've got the Brion video, or all the exposure I've had to this, aside from maybe a little bit of Kino Casino, because I fell asleep for some of it. And yeah, like, it and was again, fucking bad. Yeah. In my case... I could be doing it unintentionally because I'm fucking mad Yeah. because this shit is infuriating. Yeah. But at the same time, there is also another layer of difficulty with this because you do have a point where they were pre trans when they met this person and all this Mm -hmm. stuff started and then they transitioned during this. Now, is this another case of them transitioning to escape this? You know, I think that's a valid a valid point to bring up and look at. You know, yeah, you, you and, might and, think and, I'm an awful person for doing so, but I think it's valid because I think people do that as an excuse entirely too much. I mean, look at I the mean, ACC. Fuck. That's the entire ACC playbook. Yeah. Well, I can actually bring up another one, Christian. He only transitioned because he thought it would get him good with the ladies because lesbianism. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing, too, is it, it kind of reminds me of... uh. uh Jim Sterling, like, you know, now it's James Stephanie Sterling or Stephanie James Sterling, but the channel is still Jim Sterling. So at at some point too, like it, it sort of gets confusing at what is like the quote unquote brand. Yeah. And what's them? What's the person? Well, that too. And it's, it's uh, escapism from their past because now, now yeah. they're Ava Tyson. Okay. Well, now if you look up Ava Tyson, you're not going to see a whole lot. You're going to see a totally new, fresh 
fresh face, fresh new pair, layer of paint. But if you look up Chris Tyson, you're going to see a different layer of paint. Yeah, like, it's also like it's also like one of the situ- it's one of those things where it points the entire dead naming argument or even the idea of dead naming to begin with to be like one of those things that you can't really like enforce or at the very least is just a dumb idea to begin with and it's just been pushed to hell and back to be accepted and it just creates this fucking minutia. Yeah, look, I think the dead naming as far as like if you're doing it to be like malicious or spiteful towards somebody, yeah, like an asshole. that's that's one thing. But like when you're saying like, oh no, look, you you were the fucking World Trade Center bomber. You can't fucking hide in the fucking skirt. You're this person. Like Timothy McVeigh in a dress is not suddenly someone else. (laughs) Timothy McVeigh becomes Tina McVeigh. Yeah. Yeah. That's your argument. Yeah. (laughs) Like the Keffel situation all over again. Like when the whole shit with Bob's posting and Catboy Ranch and everything. Yeah. Like that shit applies to it as well. Like, and don't get me wrong there. I think, uh, I think that horrible shit was done to Keffel's with Bob's posting. And I think that they were groomed and abused by that person as well. But it doesn't excuse what it does not excuse Keffels from doing the same to other people. Yeah, because it it was all uh, I don't know if you like looked into the Bob's posting. Oh, I did far enough. Yeah. Okay, so you know that Bob's posting was the one who got Keffels to do fart porn while they were transitioning, right? Yeah, uh, very likely was the person that got them to do the transition actually Mm -hmm. got them interested and then looking at going overseas to thailand to do it because it's cheaper yeah because like bob's posting has like a history of pink pilling everybody yeah they've got a they've got a fetish they do yeah and then keffels regardless if they're a victim of bob's of bob postings or anything yeah they, they basically followed the like the fucking what is it the nightmare track of like re-victimizing other people. Yeah, the same goes for the fucking what is it, Drake Bell? I mean, same thing mm-hmm. tracks for me. Like, yeah. if he was victimized and victimizes somebody else, it does not excuse him. But it explains it. Uh, yeah. Sort of like that. Yeah, and it but, gives you, you know, a track record to convict the person who started it all. Yeah, exactly. You can like sort of go back down the line. Yeah, but I, I don't think that makes them blame free. I think they are just subject to the same laws and the same actions that any other person would be because just you doing it like there's there's so many other options out there why why go through this route like you know if you didn't get help for yourself or something like that or you didn't have the wherewithal and you didn't have enough support i'm sorry but that doesn't excuse you from committing a heinous act yeah it's like you know the difference between right and wrong yeah there's no way how you could argue insanity I think that brings up an interesting debate with like Drake Bell. Like in Hollywood, like if you're around that, do you really know if that's not okay? Or were you groomed into thinking it was? I would say, ipso facto, it defaults to the parents who didn't grow up in that. Well, I would say it falls under the guys that, yeah, he does know like general standards, like normal people would see this as right and wrong and that it's right and wrong when it comes to the law. That's he what, just turned a blind eye to it because it's like, hey, easy street, float on by. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, it, it should still default to the parents. And the parents are not fucking sticking up for that. Like, they're surrounded by enough adults that if you're talking yeah. about a total failure of every adult, I, I find because, that hard to believe. At some point, somebody's another... going to say that's wrong, hopefully in the present of the fucking kid, so that they realize this is wrong. Yeah, I mean, the, to, like, remove all the child rape and the trans issues away. Look at the case down in Texas where a rich kid got drunk at a party, drove his car, and wrecked into another car filled with a family of four. Two people died. Two were, were horrifically fucking paralyzed from the accident. Barely survived. He got let off on a fucking light charge for probation for a year. Yeah. Because... The, his defense team was able to argue affluenza, which is like another fucking like form of insanity plea where yep. he grew up so rich that he didn't care. He was isolated or that he, he doesn't know how know to operate in society. Yeah. Yes. And then he like books it to fucking Mexico with his mother. Are you telling me that he didn't know right and wrong if he's willing to flee the fucking country because of a probation charge? Like, I mean, come on. 
it, it, like that's just like a, a completely neutral thing that everyone could get behind. Now apply it to these cases. Yeah. But and you know right then and there it's fucking politics. But to Jim's yeah, point, no, like I, I, I the whole would whole thing is political. I would lay it at like in, in your argument, I would lay it at the feet of the parents. The parents should be the adults and not growing up around Hollywood culture enough to sit there and say, This is wrong. And if they're not willing to God, I would hope some fucking adult in it, but it doesn't excuse it. Well, see, that's yeah. kind of like the argument I'm why I want to make that, like, sh- I think in cases like that, there should be some charges for the parents as well. Yeah. Like, there should be some culpability charges. It's like you failed, especially if their parent, if, like, they did it because they were victimized themselves, like Drake. I think that 100% would be, like, a good thing to, like, if you charge him, you have to charge the parents. Yeah. I mean, hell, but like they don't even have to charge anyone. They just have to add it to the books and it can be used as a fucking threat, like a legit threat from the law, because they do have charges like that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been done before. You could do it now, although there is probably some kind of like philosophical debate that is going to completely, you know, annul that kind of fucking idea to begin with. But what actually works in practice in real world should be should be implemented to a certain degree it should be at least the starting point of how we begin to fix this horse shit yeah because i mean again another hollywood case the the kid from that 70s show yeah the scientologist he's getting railroaded yep yeah all the other cast members are are like included in fucked up shit except for one and he's like the main guy, this the 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 straight man of the show. Yep. Go for grace. Yeah, he lived a normal fucking life after that show. He was like, he didn't stay for the parties. He went back to his home and just like was working on a farm and shit. He had a normal life. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted the career. He didn't want like the weird like Hollywood lifestyle. He just wanted to make movies and shows and shit. Exactly. So when you have a person like that there's a perfect juxtaposition for what we're arguing should be the fucking norm, but it isn't. Yeah. So there needs to be uh, like uh, steps or procedures implemented in order for that to be like the, the balancing force for this shit. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. And the public is supposed to see that as a win. Also to the moderator, silencing people discussing the matter doesn't help your case, regardless of if it's true or not. Wow, man. One person said, I'm tired of this. I hate it. I hate it. I'm tired of my favorite creators being exposed for terrible things. I'm tired of hate against trans people and bigots jumping on every opportunity to paint trans people as evil pedos. I wish it would stop. One person said, don't put your faith in strangers. Hey, man, not every trans person is a bad person. We're all good friends and fans of Blair White. Blair White's fantastic. Blair, Blair, Blair you're amazing. And uh, Blair is just, I mean, like, not the only person. Uh, I've had a few friends in my day who uh, uh, were transgender, totally good people, not in any way involved in this. The issue is there's two, there's gender dysphoria, and then there's fetishists. And the people who have dysphoria tend to, and and whatever you think about it, right? People with dysphoria suffer from this, it's, it's like anorexia, they look in the mirror and there's something wrong. The people who are fetishizing it, well, you get it. They're doing something for other reasons that attract uh, 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 this kind of degeneracy, and they target people. And that's what we end up seeing, this weird behavior. But I'm going to say this. If this is true, and this lava dude is outright saying that an adult did... I'm, I, I got to be honest. Like, I think Chris Tyson might go to jail I, I'm, if this is true. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta, I'm, t- I'm trying to be very careful, man. Lava came out and said, they were just edgy jokes. Yo, that's evidence. This could go to court, criminal trial, and they will ask Chris Tyson, did you send sexually explicit... By the way, I will say something here. That I saw a Cheeto and I saw a couple other people go after this lava person. Like, I can't can't agree with that. I'm going to be honest. Like, just because they're seeing this stuff doesn't mean it's open game on going after them. Like, I feel like the more reasonable thing would be to, like, say, like, no, this is wrong. Even if you think they're edgy jokes, this is wrong. Like, I can understand yeah. that, like, you're hurt and you're upset by this, and you think we're using you as a way to get this person, but it's the fact that if it wasn't you, it'd be somebody else. 
I think it's okay to, to to criticize them and be like, "Well, you're a child. Like you don't, you don't have." You were a child here. then. Yeah, but that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like you're a fucking idiot and like like going hard at this person. I'm like, eh, no, I I disagree with that. That's not the way to go about this because now you're like making it harder for people who are victimized to come out. Because if they see how what happened with this person, they're going to be like, I don't know if I want to do that. Because well, of, no. not only that, like for the victim, it reinforces the negative ideas that they're already having. Like, yeah, you're only too. doing this to use me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, help. The the way how I would approach it is like, and if I was, it's still wrong. Yeah, like that's how you have to approach it. Is like be upfront. Don't try and like, oh, you're just some idiotic kid who doesn't know any better. Well, like I would even go a step farther and be like, do you think you're the only one? Do you think I mean, you're you necessarily weren't the only minor? Do you think you're necessarily I mean, you the, the only... first, last, and only one? Like you, you weren't. Yeah. I mean, you were the one who ran that Discord. You knew there there were other minors in there. Yeah. And if this fall falls under the textbook definition of grooming and pedophilia, yeah. Like, like my argument would be like, unfortunately, even if you don't feel like it, the law disagrees with you. Yeah. And then just leave it at that. Because it's just so, sort of like very factual. It's not really more of an opinion. It doesn't matter no. if you feel like a victim. It is still wrong yeah. on a legal standpoint. And then just mm-hmm. leave it at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I just, I disagree with some of the treatment of this. Like, really. I kind of I mean, almost want to pull it up to show you guys. Because that's what like the, the fucking stuff I saw initially. Because, like, to bring it back to what was going on earlier tonight with uh, LolCal Live, Keem was suggesting that fucking chris tyson should get the same treatment as boogie and get a fucking tattoo of what i wonder it would have to be on their face probably pedophile but i mean like he was treating it as like you know a serious suggestion like a youtuber sort of like content brain shit when it's like no this is like legal shit like i mean i think he does understand it to a degree and he's trying to play it off as a joke but at the same time like he's being irresponsible by putting that thought out there in the first place. Well, yeah, I think there's like a time and place for it, and now really, really yeah, isn't. And again, time. I'm I'm not like criticizing the joke itself. Like if it were in a vacuum, and this was like years later after the fact, you know, time plus comedy or time plus tragedy equals comedy, that kind of situation, I would yeah. laugh at the joke. I would laugh at the suggestion. See, like this even from Diorio. Like, you're calling out YouTubers who literally didn't cover your story and sending them a ton of hate. Again, small fucking person. Like, I'll go back and look at the end of this. Just some of these fucking replies are just bad. Like, look, objectively, the kid is dumb. Or the adult here is dumb. Yeah. That's because of conditioning. Yeah. Not because of him being a fucking retard. Like, all this shit... I mean, you don't have to go, like, full Alex Jones mode and accuse him of being a Bilderberg vampire or whatever yeah. and say, we're breaking the conditioning by doing so. Like here, this dude's getting exposed by both creators. This shows the messages. And it shows the Cheeto and the reply that you just saw. So it's, like, lyrics. Mm-hmm. Lying about a Cheeto and scent. Like, why are you calling out a victim for lying? Okay, so they didn't say the right thing. What's? Hmm. I mean if the victim was like lying, like changing up their story, I can understand calling them out. Yeah. But being conditioned to the point where they actually believe it wasn't bad. That makes no fucking sense. Yeah. <laughs> fucking king of shit. <laughs> you're not just a victim. You're a gay victim. What the fuck, man? <laughs> like I could see him doing it as a joke. As a joke. Unlike the like... rest of these. Yeah. I can see him doing it as a joke, but, but not still, any of these like, other characters. Very, there's people like standing by it. There's people that are like uh, being just total assholes. The alleged victim posted this. Yeah, I mean, this is not the way how to handle the situation. No, no and like, like if you're gonna go after someone, go after the hypocrites. To show it again, like he's got four thousand followers. Like, not exactly a big account. And you're putting him on blast for being the victim who's still brainwashed to this day. Yeah. Yeah, and just to show you, Belinda here, it's a- Ava Chris Tyson. Like, that's even, and Chris Tyson, or Christy Tyson, is there at. Like, so they, they go by both names. 
but yeah, like it's just tons. And wait, tons was that Mudahar? Uh, that big tweet right there. Oh wait, no, it wasn't. No. It looked like his profile pic for a sec. No, but like it's just, it's kind of getting like kind of rabid the other direction now. Yeah, uh, again, yeah. this just like this whole thing it just screams hypocrisy at this point. I don't know if they're having like fucking traumatic uh, nightmares of what happened with fu- with fucking pyrocynical and whatnot because of ivory. I have no idea. Yeah, because yeah, that was, was like a similar situation. Because yeah, ivory I was didn't say that. Yeah, because ivory didn't know like whether or not they were being groomed. They were just told that yeah, this is grooming. That the dude is like a pedophile, and then he went to Tommy C with the story. And the dude was factually right with, like, what he presented was all true. But he was just confused on whether or not he was a grooming victim. And then all of commentary basically ruined the kid's life to where he's, on several different occasions, like, has, like, tried to attempt. Shit. So I could see the same situation happening with Lava here, but on a more drastic fucking scale. Well, yeah, because it seems like there's people going a lot harder on Lava than... Yeah. Oh, and Ivory from back then. It's like, and it, it, there's like a fever pitch now with this sort of shit in the community. Yeah, it's almost rabid. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just just focus it on Chris. Focus it on Chris. Focus yeah. it on the fucking hypocritical content creators. Yeah. The victims, whether they agree with you or not, are not fair fucking game, no matter no. how old they are. No. No, and I believe there was, there was a better way to go about the response that a lot of people have had here, like... Like I said, it's just a matter of like, you can go about it and just say like, no, this is this is wrong. You you were wrong to like, and if it's not you, it was somebody else. Like, even if you don't agree here, we have proof that you weren't the only one. So like, you saying no and you sticking up for them like this is it's also possibly harming other people. Like you could even I mean, moralize that way if you want. I mean, hell, like back uh, not to bring it back. Well, to this is another point from the Michael Jackson case because. He was even accused of raping Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And he had to come and out like, and say that I wasn't a victim. Like yeah. nothing yeah, happened. And ev- yeah, and everyone was like gaslighting him and saying, no, you're wrong. You were a victim and were harassing him day in and day out when he was yeah. still a kid. Yeah. It's like this, but in reverse. Yeah, it's the exact opposite. Yeah. It's like, well, the victim's not going along with the story. So now we throw the victim under the bus, too. Like, are you right. fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's all about painting the narrative. <laughs> like that's almost to me as absurd as like the shit that we heard with the fucking Lyle Convoy in our community shit where you can't put a story out there unless you have the victim's fucking full endorsement. Yeah. Like no, that's just as absurd the opposite direction. Yeah. Because like be if you have enough fucking proof that's doing something bad. Yeah. If you have the proof to back it up. Mind you, that's that's a key point here. Having the proof to back it up, and there's proof here to back this up. Like, you should be able to go after somebody. Like, you shouldn't just sit on it because the victim doesn't agree, or you shouldn't sit on it because you don't agree with the situation. Like, this should be morals aside, like, something you bring to attention. Uh, it just seems like commentary is fucking collapsing at this point, which is probably for the best, but it's going to take a lot of fucking victims down with them. Yeah. Yeah. Criminal trial, and they will ask Chris Tyson, did you send sexually explicit statements, comments, images to a 13-year-old? He's going to say yes. The 13-year-old already publicly admitted they were just edgy jokes. It doesn't matter if you think they're edgy jokes. You've admitted the things that were sent were were true. Wild. The the fact, the crazy thing is, Keem starts saying, Mr. Beast connected me to lava. Mr. Beast knows. Holy crap, dude. I mean, that right there. Yeah. The next segment will be coming up yeah, at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast IRL. So we'll wrap things up now. Smash. Yeah, like th- that's just one of the tidbits of information that everyone's overlooking when it comes to cr- when it comes to fucking Mr. Uh, Beast. M- yeah, Mr. Beast is that Keem even confirmed just through the actions that Mr. Beast had taken, according to Keem, and how much you want to like imbue his testimony. Yeah. With the truth and being factual. I mean, that right there was like case closed he knew he knew the whole time it's fucking ridiculous the dude's a pedophile it's over mr beast should be fucking canceled because he had fucking jimmy seville in his fucking friend group yeah honestly yeah like i 
Look, I'm I'm all for. about I'm all about like Mr. Beast has done good stuff and like it's stupid to cancel him over fucking because he dug wells in Africa or helped blind people see or anything. But at the same time, I don't believe doing all of that good abolishes like bad doings Criticism. like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you're not so, admonished from it. Like, I mean, th that's the thing. It's like uh, it's like the inverse, like three rights don't invert a wrong. <laughs> where you know it's two wrongs don't make a right yeah yeah like this is this is like saying like oh well the dictator he put a he put a water well in this town in africa meanwhile he slaughtered how many villages because they stood in his way like oh i have oh, oh. <laughs> you could say it could be like well hitler might have <laughs> but he had a zero percent unemployment rate yeah <laughs> He had a strong, stable economy. I mean, hell, he had a negative, uh, like, you know, fucking employment rate because he was using <laughs> slave labor. Exactly. Now, nobody cancel us. That's literally the a channel. Name. I mean, I mean, seriously, okay. it's like good. It's like good guy Stalin. Like he helped us win World War II against evil Hitler. Yeah. Meanwhile, gulags, Siberia, starvations, fucking. Oh yeah. Starting a cold war, giving, like, giving the go ahead for the Korean War. Because he got the new villages and shit. Yeah. Like, Literally, like, the Russian machine was a machine for a reason. It was a fucking meat grinder. Yeah. <laughs> and all they har all they did was harvest grain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, this is the problem with this kind of thinking. Is like, oh, he does. He's done like a ton of good. Like, yeah, even if Michael Jackson was guilty of all the shit, all the good he did, like building hospitals for for like yeah. fucking burn victims after like a massive attack I, if i remember correctly that's what happened yeah like, yeah i believe he is at least a big contributor to setting up the wing yeah yeah it's like that's good on you but you're still a pedophile that's good on you but you still covered up for yeah. your pedophile friend yeah like it's i i cannot i cannot like it's like it, it's even proportional given how many fans Mr. Beast has and how how much access Chris had uh, to those fans. Yeah. Yeah. When they were underage, it's like just as many people as you help with those wells in Africa get fresh water, a, a sizable fucking fraction is the possibility of what your friend has done damage to of a sexual nature. I'm just really curious at what like Dawson was saying about that. Like, this is just the beginning. Like, I'm going to be very interested in the next week or two as more shit starts coming out. I mean, honestly, I, I went back and watched that Meat Canyon video that he did of fucking uh, Mr. Beast, where they yeah. had the cancer patient. It was like, would you want, like, you know, uh, what was it? Ha have, like, uh, the, the cancerous organ removed and replaced, or would you want a Mr. Beast Tesla? And I'm thinking... <laughs> How many of these victims did they buy off? Because, I mean, not to shit on the kid again. I mean, he does seem like he's bought and paid for. Or he's been heavily fucking brainwashed. Yeah. like Or even maybe uh, pressured behind the scenes. Yeah. I would hope not. But, you know, how the, these things go with these massive power players. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mr. I mean, Beast didn't get to where he is by just not knowing what he's doing. I mean, even if it wasn't like, you know, he actually raped the kid or anything, like, the, it's still going to take therapy for him to get back even to an even kilter to understand why it was wrong in the first place. Well, yeah, that's kind of like what I'm taking out of it. Like, he doesn't understand that it was wrong. So it kind of makes me wonder, it's like, how long was, like, did this go on for? Because, like, yeah, it, and it's how... common sense to anyone on the outside looking in that it was wrong, you know? Yeah. And this kid right here, it's like he's signaling like I'm not a victim, even though he clearly is by the letter of the law and by all of like medical psychology and everything. It's like he's had two years as an adult and he's still like, you know, part of the Mr. Beast fandom. Like he could be playing a contributing factor because that's how this shit works. Yeah. yeah so he, he could, could be a feeder at this point bringing people well, in. Yeah, he could be. Yeah, he could be like um that one dumb bitch for Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, Gislaine Maxwell? Yeah, he could be basically be the Gislaine Maxwell to Chris Tyson. Or the Spencer to Camden Gerard Davis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.
but, I, but I, i'm just saying it's like he could potentially have victimized kids too and he doesn't know about it and he's setting himself into a very precarious position yeah and like i think it's too it kind of shows the mentality right like he doesn't think he's a victim so it's like what was exactly told to him like oh in order to be a victim like you have to be raped or you have to be molested like it, yeah you know it's like, the, like the lay of something standard was a kid actually harmed no <laughs> yeah. and not no pedophile yeah yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but they were still technically psychologically harmed because i'm sure this now like fucks with the rest of his relationships I'm going to look something up off screen. So I think it's safe to say that things have gotten 10 times worse for Chris Tyson. As I have uncovered within the past few hours, some really damning information regarding Chris Tyson and a then 13 year old that Chris was allegedly talking to years ago when Chris was around 20 years old, an adult. Now, before we get into what I have recently found, I just wanted to give a special shout out to the person who originally brought this to light, the person who had investigated all of this and provided all of the receipts and also also including all of the information that we went over yesterday because apparently the same person who has put out the information on these new allegations was the same person who obtained these tweets so props to them for all of this information now you guys might recall if you watched all of yesterday's video that at the end of the video we went over a pinned comment from a user who actually happens to be the same guy who has been covering this on his channel and who's brought today's information to light and if you guys do remember in that comment prism went over how apparently he tried to get EVP 445 to talk about this essentially to bring more attention to it and eventually after EVP 445 stopped cooperating with him he decided to try Chris Chan and personally if you ask me I don't really know if that was the best idea because as you guys may know Chris Chan and EVP 445 don't have the best reputations nor are they really that credible. Now a little bit further in the comment he talks about how apparently Chris Tyson allegedly messaged a 14 year old and jokingly flirted and talked about sending nudes to him. Now, just based off of this part in the comment, I found that to be really odd, and I had never heard of apparently Chris Tyson messaging a 14-year-old, so I figured I would do a little bit of research, and it actually turns out that Prism here made around a month ago a 40-minute long video that we're going to be going over today, and I have gone ahead and I have pre-watched it, and all I'm going to tell you right now before we get into it is that the ages match up, and it looks really bad. Now, I can't say all of this is true 100% or anything like that. It's all allegations. You know, take the things that you see here with a grain of salt i know based off of what we went over yesterday you might think that chris tyson is like a pedophile or a predator or something insane like that in my opinion i wouldn't really jump on that real quick because we don't know if 100 chris is a pedophile or a predator or whatever we just know that chris has done some really weird things in his past over on twitter so without further ado let's get into it so based off of prism's video he has decided to keep the alleged at the time 13 year olds name private for the most part and he refers to this person as BW. He uses their initials and they also go by the screen name of Lava GS. Now essentially what happened and how it happened according to Prism here is Chris Tyson started a friendship with somebody who was 13 years old at the time when they were 20 years old. Now just for a little bit of context here the then 13 year old actually happens to be the same age as me and is currently as of 2024 20 years old. Just keep that in mind as we go forward. BW Chris Tyson reached out to this guy uh, when he was 13 years old. Except the problem with that is Chris Tyson started an online friendship with this guy when he was only 13 years old. Now the problem with that is Chris Tyson was born in July of 1996. Lava GS was born on November 12th, 2003. The problem with that is that is that there's a seven year age gap. So when you started socializing minute, with this guy online. <laughs> Chris Tyson's birthday. When was that? First of July, 96. Happy birthday, pedophile. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't unwrap any children. Yeah. 1996. Lava GS was born on November 12th, 2000. By the way, I will say that it's funny that the problem here is not not the ages that they were, but the age gap. Like, eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> High school context, right? Yeah. <laughs> 2003. I mean, the problem it's that. not even high school context of the way how Augie was, uh, like, Augie was trying to frame it. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like Big Brother program, you know? Yeah. 
<laughs> where you have someone who's in high school like comes in to counsel like a younger uh, kid yeah. by being like a pseudo big brother. It's got to be they're both in high school for high school context to apply. <laughs> uh, minor detail, right? Get it? Minor. Yeah, minor detail. <laughs> uh, oh fuck! Is that is that there's a seven year age gap? So when you started socializing with this guy online and building an online connection and some sort of friendship, and you know you talking to this guy, playing video games with him, socializing. He was only 13 years old. He was in middle school and you were in college. You were 20 years old. So that's what I'm going to talk about is why is it that someone who is in college, who is like a sophomore or junior at that point, what are you doing making friends with a middle schooler? So, yeah, I mean, oh, so I far with you. only that, it's our. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just wanted to do something innocent, like make cupcakes. Yeah. He's yeah, looking for art baking. inspiration. Some baking. Yeah. <laughs> they were going to do a bake sale. Nothing wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, Hitler did that too. But By the way, I was watching <laughs> stuff back. Um, and has anybody checked to see if EDP445 is still alive? I think he's still alive. I okay. mean, yeah. he was complaining about liver failure like a year ago. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was watching well, some stuff back he from like all this. Coming up on that though. <laughs> was, yeah, he should. I was watching uh, a lot of the stuff with the Boogie stuff, and like apparently when Boogie went and saw him, like the guy actually is getting like dialysis three times a fucking week. Well, yeah, because he's at like the end stage of failure, like so. Yeah, he he's had, like, like in full like renal failure. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, but this guy said that he was trying to work with EDP and Christian like a couple months apart, and that was like a few months ago. So oh, it's so a possibility still... that he's still kicking. Yeah. That's going to be a hell of a stream, the EDP death stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I could buy one of them cupcake costumes <laughs> and stream oh, as the cupcake. <laughs> 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 Look, guys. Uh, I, don't I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> why? Why is the why is the cupcake Mickey Mouse? I, I don't know, but it... <laughs> I creep <laughs> I, I don't know if your dog would be up to it, but you could dress them up as a little cupcake, or better yet. <laughs> Replace the cherry on top of the costume with like a dog bed and have them sleep on a tough year. What you should do is have them dress as Chet Goldstein and you dress up as the cupcake. Like they're busting you. Yeah, they're barking in the background. And oh everything. my god. Oh, we were, we were just there for uh, uh, an innocent meetup. <laughs> yeah, no, wait. Have one dress up as Chet Goldstein. Yeah, have one dre dress up as Chet Goldstein and the other one is like a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotta go, guys! Oh. <laughs> Did you hear about the Chet Goldstein thing? Oh yeah, I got that tagged. Okay, oh, good. Because I want to talk I about that. Yeah, that dude ended himself. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't say I'm upset though. <laughs> that resolution came out well. <laughs> yeah, it saved the taxpayers some money. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Already looking bad. Like, this is definitely not something that Chris should have been doing. And I'm not really too sure if he knew that, like, he shouldn't have been doing that in really any capacity at all. Because at the least, it's really fucking weird. But it really makes it worse when you factor in that artwork, that quote-unquote artwork that we went over yesterday in yesterday's video. And another thing that I think yeah. is really important here. I'm wondering around your age group another thing that is mentioned too besides the two things that we just went over is that apparently prism has also noted that they communicated one-on-one -on -one and unattended and yeah that's where this starts getting bad like really bad if you thought it was bad before we'll just think about bad but times 10 because prism goes into detail <laughs> about how apparently chris made wait 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 think about bad but times 10 like what the fuck so really bad yeah. Oh, come on. They were just they were just discussing on how to build the best pillow fort. Right. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> totally innocent. 
Oh, the, here's the interaction right here. So I really enjoyed playing Fortnite with you guys. You want to watch the stream or watch me stream? Uh, please stream again. Thanks, Dad. Uh, oh, you want to moderate it? No uh, so way! You're calling a 14 year old daddy, you freak. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'd I'd love pedophile, to. pedophile. Pedophile. Against the wall. <laughs> Uh, a prism, like, a moderator, again, joking, and also even worse than that. You're saying it's like it's almost like it's almost like if you're an adult man and you're calling like a complete stranger who's like a 13 year old woman or girl, they're calling her hun or sweetie pie or something yeah. like that. It's just like it's beyond fucking like obvious at that point. Yeah, yeah. And if I you're know not this is gonna like be serious. you know related to them like brother or like parent. Yeah. You shouldn't be saying that shit. Chris made Prism a moderator, and also even worse than that, and I know this is going to be stereotypical, but yeah, also Prism goes into detail about how apparently Lava had Chris added on Snapchat. Like, I know some of you guys in the audience are thinking to yourselves, well, yeah, it looks like Chris is kind of cooked, but yeah, I got a weird snap well, from I Chris. Mean, and then as you guys can see right here, there's a screenshot of- Like, if this had stayed to, like, the comment section of videos- Wait a minute. I can understand- what, you what? see the title on this snap? Yeah. Coming for America? Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's one of the ones that they were talking about. Mm-hmm. Bro. So right there, that's like sexual that's a joke. joke. It's a joke, though, bro. Like, it's totally appropriate. Again, it's like what I was telling you when it came to the fucking lolly shit in that interview, Pat. Sex jokes with kids? It's even worse. Look at the date. That means this it shit was going weird. on for three years already. Yeah. Yeah. The date. That's the problem. Like, because if they're 20 now, minus four, four or five, also sorry. Also look at the date. Well, yeah. Like, because it was well into 2019 when the Shadman shit broke. Yeah. Oh my fucking God. But like, they're 15 or 16. So it's been going on for two or three years. They've been in contact at this point. Like, mm -hmm. no wonder they Long think they're term. like, God. Yeah, this is like a long-term relationship yeah. between the two of them. Like, it's not just like, you know, this dude that hit him up on This is not Instagram like a one-time like incident, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not like the, hey, you're kind of cute, lol. You know, like how we see some of the people like on, on like Instagram and shit, right? Where they yeah. like will say like a minor is cute and then it's really weird. Like this was like a long-term interaction. Yeah the snap up in the left hand top corner there you can see from christopher and then there's a picture of chris in front of the american flag and there's text that chris displayed and the text says coming for america like c-u-m-m-i-n-g and also just keep in mind that lava right here if you do the math with this being january 26 2019 lava right here would have been 15 years old and as for how old chris would be here chris would have been 22 and a half years old so yeah by just knowing that like why why in in any context would you send something like that to somebody that you most likely know is 15 years old while you are 22 years old like i have a feeling that people are gonna argue well this is a joke or something by chris you know chris is a funny guy he's the meme god but this right here is not a joke that you make to somebody who is seven years younger than you and to somebody who is a minor now moving a little bit further in the video prism talks about how chris and lava met and that was apparently because lava won a challenge that mr Mr. Beast was doing and Lava received a signed knife from Mr. Beast. When he was 16, he was in a Mr. Beast video. He asked Jimmy, how hard do you want it? 68 million people have seen it. What I want to start out with is when this guy was really young, he yeah. won some sort of competition or was involved and he DM'd Mr. Beast on Twitter and got sent a knife. Oh, Mr. Beast. Awesome. Is that an actual knife? Is it with... Or just like a toy knife. I think it's, oh, it's probably knife. like an actual knife. Yeah. Okay, so quite literally, Mr. Beast is sending, you know, weapons to kids. <laughs> He's arming the youth. <laughs> so, uh, so what was he really doing over there in Africa? Was he trying to be a warlord? Literally, it's like the child soldiers from Metal Gear Solid. He's making the next Raiden. Yeah, he basically has Chris there to groom the miners that will make the child army. Mr. You know, Beast the one is that... all of this. 
<laughs> it's like you know PewDiePie's fake kid, child army and like Mr. Medical. Yeah. It's like no, Mr. Beast was actually doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it turns out that Mr. Beast was Solidus this whole time, <laughs> <laughs> building his own child army in Africa. <laughs> he he's the real yeah. Coney 2012. <laughs> It's like soon our warlord will come back and like Mr. Beast just descends from this like Apache. Uh, so this was back in 2016, okay. So this had been eight years ago. So this would have been you know, when he was still a minor. Yeah. yeah. So he would have been what, twelve? Yeah. Something around there because he was fifteen in twenty nineteen. This is twenty sixteen. So Well if he's about twenty 12, now, 13. yeah. Twenty now minus eight would make twelve. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, it's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse than we thought okay okay so how many fucking memes do we have to come up with to get the point across at this point oh my right. god right it's like it's like outer heaven like yeah well i was trying to see like i don't know if it's actual signature or if you just like i'm guessing it looks like maybe jimmy and his whatever his last name is you know, this would have fell in the timeline when Fed Smoker was doing his fucking world tour, so... God damn it. We, we missed a Fed, Fed Smoker. Smoker. <laughs> we should have said Fed Smoker. Can you imagine that? Like, you just see him, like, roll up on, like, a motorcycle to Chris Tyson. Baby Raper! <laughs> this, I would have paid man, to see baby. the Mr. Beast as a Baby Raper arc. <laughs> okay. oh and he has that that one youtube channel that would be perfect yes <laughs> you talking about the church uh, one man. Yes, yes, with, yeah with the she's and the males Yes, yes. <laughs> damn it fed smoker why didn't you live signed by mr beast he was like 12 or something and it was a karambit signed by Mr. Beast. It was a CSGO karambit. Um, sure, that that seems oh, to damn. be the first interaction. It was CSGO. It wasn't a real knife. Oh. It was just it was just a skin. I was like, probably it, it was just a skin. <laughs> it, was prob- it was probably one of like the couple ones that are worth a couple thousand though. Yeah. So like, yeah, it, probably. It, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be cheap. But damn it, like, there goes my like solidest fucking. <laughs> Head cannon. I don't know. I mean, it could still be. It looks like a real knife. It looks like it's got an edge to it. Like that's the thing that's getting me. That's that true. looks like it's got he's, an edge on it. He's pulling. He is pulling a foxhound. He's VR training him. <laughs> but like that looks like an actual knife that has a a wrap put on it, because it looks like the wrap yeah. didn't stay very well down here. Maybe from someone twirling it around their fingers or something, or they didn't just cut weird around the edges. But like, yeah, it looks like a wrapped knife. Yeah, um, I, I just don't know how else to explain it. Sure, that that seems to be the first interaction that I can tell. So I guess it's one thing for Lava to win the challenge, and that's the reason why they get into contact with him. But like after that, there shouldn't be any like connection. They, including Chris, should not have been trying to be friends with this kid or anything like that. But anyways, moving on. Now I'm not really trying to say that this specific screenshot right here is anything more than just weird. But after what we went over in my last video with the drawings and stuff, like it's really weird. Let alone having a 14 year old moderate your YouTube stream. I showed the screenshot a little bit earlier in the beginning of the video, but we're going to analyze it now. Chris on March 26, 2018 put out a tweet and he said, I really enjoy playing Fortnite. Would you guys want to watch me stream? And then he put up a poll and then Lava responds and he says, please stream again in all caps. Chris responds, thanks dad, you want to moderate it? Like, yeah, I really shouldn't have to tell you why this is weird given the ages, but just why? Chris was how old during this? 2021? 20, and he's calling a literal old 14 year old his dad like i don't know man this shit's just weird now it looks like we have some more tweets here that don't look too important so i'm gonna skip past those i'll show them on the screen anyway so you guys can see tweets here that don't look too important so i'm gonna skip past those i'll show them on the screen this is actually pretty accurate me and managed pickle can confirm chris is it magical pickle or mangled or pickle? mangled yeah mangled pickle yeah uh okay <laughs> Lava when he has one card left, Chris. Okay. It makes me happy, lol. Green anyway, so you guys can see. Th- okay. Oh, yeah. Again, this is, I mean, that right there is pretty much like, I mean, 
it's yeah, a more it's, tamer version of building a bond with your victim. That's that's kind of what I was like. Yeah, it's it's dumb, but like it just shows like constant interaction. Them, but then this is yeah, constant interaction, and it's like on top of like the sex jokes, you got the regular jokes, so it blurs the fucking lines. Yeah, that yeah, we accidentally predicted this. Yeah, the really questionable part comes in in which lava asks chris on february 14th 2018 chris does she know about your hentai addiction like excuse me like why does lava know why would about you know about his hentai addiction yeah porn hello yeah he's a pedophile and when was that yeah. go back that was back in like uh when chris was like 20 or 21 or something like that oh jesus christ Simple part comes in, in which Lava asks Chris well, on February 14th, 2018. Chris, okay, so this was also 2018 on Valentine's Day. And again, Day. again, the Shadman shit. That's yeah. probably what he was referencing. So the kid knew about Shadman, which is like completely fucked up. Yeah. And he knew that Chris had a hentai addiction, which was the Shadman shit. Which is, is it, it's the case right there. Bam. It's like right God, there. Fucking, he's a pedophile fucking weird and grimy and shit like oh fuck people will defend it though yeah it's just a joke they were having an inside joke you know wink wink yeah you know what i I wake up and get ready for school and talk to my friends about hentai addictions like patrick like the kids like the kid could have said like does she know that you like hentai like i mean to use the word hentai addiction that's something he had to have heard from chris because yeah what would the kid like, know about addiction? Well, and talking about that, like, it's had to have come up and been, like, literally at least said, at least once, yeah, I'm kind of addicted to hentai. Like, yeah. if not, like, given justifiable fucking reason for it, which is the creepier thing that's, like, in the back of my mind is, like, how that came up contextually. Oh, yeah. but no, Patrick, if you go at people for being hypocrites for not wanting to cover this, uh, you're just playing team sports, so say it's Xylene and Diorio. Does she know about your hentai addiction? Like, excuse me? Like, why does Lava know about this supposed hentai addiction that Chris has? Like, it's really odd that a 14-year-old knows that a 21-year-old has a hentai addiction, and these two happen to be friends. Like, why the hell would you tell somebody who is this age, or frankly a minor, weird sexual shit in the things that you're into sexually? Like, this is highly questionable, and I don't know what Chris was doing here. At this point, you already had been talking to this guy you're already friends with this guy you already know this guy and what is he what, i mean the whole thing is like right there you can safely assume that chris just committed another felony sharing sexually explicit images with a minor yeah like that that's already grounds for being a pedophile already in the eyes of the law but you we know, live in fucking youtube land therefore I mean, uh-uh people People were accused of being pedophiles for less on the platform. Yeah. Like, who was that one dude that gets out because of Keemstar? Uh, Bashiverse? Yeah, Bashiverse. Rip. Like, the motherfucker wasn't a pedophile and Keem was just joking with him. And then it got stuck to his name until he... Did he end it all, if I remember correctly? No, he died of COVID. Okay. Oh, do you want to repeat that's Riley's like... point, by the way, for Ellington? Okay. Her, uh, let me pull up the tweet here. Because I showed it to Sen, and it was like, your fucking abuela is nuts. <laughs> Let me find it. Right here. I'm going to say this now. If you're, take, if you're talking, or no, if you're taking this Ava Chris Tyson shit and playing team sports with it, no matter what team you are on, you are so pissing me off. And for the love of everything, holy stop conflating it with the Dr. Disrespect to- story. And Tana Mongu's story. Uh, there's more to it here. Yeah, we have all more th- evidence all- against Tyson. Yeah, all three situations are gross and inexcusable. And stop trying to tell content creators what they can and cannot cover. Fuck you, it's their platform. So, what she's trying to say here is that, oh, just because some people don't want to like cover it doesn't mean that you should harass them. Is how she's playing it under the guise of team sports. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous because if, you know, if it's the fucking internet and you're keeping it a hundred and this is a principled fucking point, then what is the wrong 
uh, like what is wrong of holding those people account for not covering this shit for not talking about it when they're willing to have no fucking evidence except for a dude who admits to it to go at him as fucking hard as like fucking uh it were fucking ragnarok coming to earth yeah and then say fuck and say fuck all about chris tyson when you have this fucking much evidence i'm sorry but yeah these people need to be held to account because they are the ones who are playing team sports but it's really fucking infuriating now see like okay i'm gonna justify my point on this really quick like if anybody wants a fucking justification or you don't i don't give a fuck um I didn't cover any of that shit because when I saw the shit that people watch on my channel, you guys didn't really like it when I covered that kind of crap. And to be honest, it's kind of like, regardless of the person, I wasn't really a fan of it. Like, it, it just, it's mentally fucking taxing. I'll be honest. But, uh, like, so I just didn't think anybody was interested in it. Like, so I haven't covered the Dr. Disrespect or the Tyson stuff or the Tana Mongo or any of that shit. None of it. Like, the only reason why I'm looking at this is because, like, now it's starting to sound like this is, like, ridiculous to not look at. Yeah, like, this is so, there's so blatantly, like, holy shit. Like, you cannot disregard and, like, just pass this over. Like, it's just, it, I, I heard the shit last night, like I said, on fucking Kino Casino, and I was like, oh shit. Like, I, I remember I was literally in the kitchen eating, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, this is, this is bad. Like <laughs> when I heard the 13 yeah. year old victim was the one coming out and putting all this shit out there, especially if you covered the Dr. Disrespect shit, I think it's kind of weird that you would cover that, but not this. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you with that. Like if, it's like, if you're going to put that in like a month's house, time, like it's almost been like a month and a half's time since the Dr. Disrespect story happened. And now we've got this like, if people get tunneled vision on what kind of content that they want to do, I can understand it. Yeah. But I mean, the people who make it a, you know, a part of their content to hop on like the hottest fucking story imaginable yeah. and say, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah that's, I'm going to call bullshit. Yeah. So yeah, this whole team sports narrative is just completely and utterly fucking retarded. What, what, what are you saying here? So you post something that says, guys, we are so close to our goal. Oh my God. One more Patreon and I'm releasing my nudes. And of course, this is some poorly made joke. I've seen these kinds of jokes online before where it says, oh, if this post gets one like, I'll kill myself. And then the, and then the person likes it. it. It's, you know, this kind of joke, it says a goal of $3. I want to see if anyone is dumb enough to give me money. But of course, it's only you and this other guy in this Twitter thread. And this is the part I have a problem with. This isn't a group chat. This is literally just him and There's this other guy. There's one other guy problem. The other joke that you brought up as an example is something that anyone could pick up on besides the mentally enfeeble. Yeah. Would be able to tell as a joke. This one is of a sexual nature, so it's kind of a coin toss. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to throw it out there, but then be like, oh, well, this is condemning evidence. But, like, I'm just kind of interested to see what's said here. He's been talking to it's you. Just, and then he's like... I was going to say, like, the totality of these sex jokes is the evidence, like, the argument for why yeah. he was inappropriate, why he is a sex freak and a pedophile. Because yeah. it all, like, it's all one fucking theme. It wasn't that he was, like, pretending to be, like, the suicide baiting character for a meme. He was being this, like, morally degenerate sex freak. Well, interacting and that's, with that's kids. the thing that struck me so far is, like, some of the stuff that you're seeing is from Twitter feeds, and that's the stuff that they felt okay to say in public. Yeah, what's going so, on behind the scenes? Yeah, because yeah, you're typically like going to be a looks... little more, a little more open, a little more unthrottled. Yeah, and and that uh, lava kid, like he literally just let the cat out of the bag with like, does uh, do they know that you have a hentai addiction? Like, yeah, hello, yeah. Chat. This is literally just him and this other guy that he's been talking to and that he's friends with online. He says, "Lava says I'm your first Patreon." Big boy. Now keep in mind, Chris Tyson, God he would have been, it. he was born July 1996, so he would have been 22 years old at the time, or around that, that was age. The, wait, that was and the yeah. membership role name? Big boy? No, not that, I think it was just uh, a come on. 
Oh, oh, come on. Okay, so that wasn't a roll. Because, like, if that was a fucking roll, like, how deep does this fucking joke have to go? Yeah. Because if that was the case, I could have whipped out a fucking Michael Jackson big boy joke <laughs> from, like, Robot Chicken. Yeah. Man, okay. Now, keep in mind, Chris Tyson, he would have been... He was born July 1996, so he would have been 22 years old at the time, or around that age. And you have this guy who was born in November 12, 2003. He would have been. What was that? I hate to make you pause it again, but like again, the come on, like that is also an indicator that they're being playful with sexual yeah. terms, like not just terms of endearment, but like, yeah. I mean, we're all adults here. We've probably seen a porno or two. Yeah. And the fucking acting is about as horrid as like anyone make an apology on Twitter for fucked up shit that they've done. Well, it's like pet names. I mean, this is literally fucking pet names at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, quite literally, this is like the Mr. Beast version of Catboy ranch to an extent. Actually, that's a good comparison. Yeah. Instead of Catboy ranch, it's big boy ranch. Oh God. I was going to say something worse. I'm going to refrain. 14. Don't do it. And of course, <laughs> here he is. I'm your first Patreon, Big Boy, which he's calling him Big Boy. And uh, he shows that he donated some money. He donated like a dollar or something. So it's not enough to meet the goal. And he says, but not $5. Pathetic. Just kidding. Kissy face. Now, I don't think I. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Let me just say that much. That's at the very least fucking weird. Like in public again. Like, how do you excuse that the fuck away? Yeah. You can't. I mean, seriously. I mean, fucking Keffels was doing it in public, too. Yeah, yeah, this is the same as the fucking Catboy collars. Yeah. I should have to explain why this is bad. And they definitely, really, it was like a oh, yeah. worst okay, look, so... especially <laughs> give. I was going to say, like, in, in lieu of the Catboy collars, these guys were getting, like, custom CSGO skin knives. Yeah. <laughs> with a shoddy That's fucking a application by the way yeah. <laughs> it was made in the taiwan shit that we went over in the last video and i know that this is off topic i really hate to go off topic but the amount of people who are in my comments in the last video justifying the lolly or at least trying to is absolutely insane and i'm hoping that when this video comes out because i'm currently making it i really hope that this can help change your disgusting perspective on people like this and their weird kinks because this is bad and what we went over in the last video okay, first is off Brion, don't classify lolly as a kink it's not that like yeah it's basically trying to change the word pederast into pedophile like it's lust not love or like a yeah. kink or something like wrong in their fucking head well i mean there is something wrong but it's not going to be considered as a mental illness that could be treated no disgusting in and of itself now when it comes down to those tweets where apparently lava was going to donate to chris tyson i mean you can obviously try to justify it with a joke and i wouldn't necessarily say that this is the most damning thing ever but when it's coupled with the fact that you know that previous shit came out that i talked about in my last video and the other things that we're currently going over in this video it's inappropriate behavior it's weird and i'm not calling chris anything more than a huge weirdo who has had an in appropriate conversation with a minor but like overall this is fucking bad yeah coward that, this, this, coward coward this is the part that i have a problem with and i'm gonna <laughs> say this but if you know this guy is that young and you've been talking to him one-on-one -on -one online and you've been socializing with them and making friends what is this comment supposed to mean i'll tell you what it means it means that you're telling him that he needs to donate five dollars so you can release your nudes or whatever and you sent him a kissy face now granted you could say that this is a joke or whatever this is bro talk but keep in mind this is with someone who's like this is bro talk 14. what the okay there's already like a comedic bit about this kind of shit when it comes to adult men being gay with each other i mean we're bros and we have never talked like that to each other <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm just saying. I am just saying. <laughs> Behind the scenes, we have not talked to like that with either of us. So it's like thing that gets me is the kissy face. Like the fuck kind of goddamn bullshit fucking 
bro talk are you fucking coming up with? And like, okay, I, I think he made a step too far. I will say this in criticism. All right. I will say that you could dismiss the I will release my nudes like fucking Patreon thing just to get people to sign up. Like, okay, it was a ploy. The problem is not that and that you're saying, oh, we'll donate five bucks to get my nudes. No, it's first of all, trying to pressure the kid out of money, which is fucking weird. And then it's the it's grooming. It, it actually is grooming. Yeah, like, like I mean, in a that's couple a trust different factor. fucking ways. Like that's that's like another one of those tests. Like, uh, how far are you willing to go? Are you willing yeah. to give me a buck? You know, it's yeah. like, oh, you don't again, love me like enough to give me twenty someone. bucks. You know, like, yeah, here, yeah. let me sweeten the pot. You know, joke, joke. Yeah, like it's all fucking there. It's just that we're dealing with fucking illiterate morons. Jesus fucking Christ. Team. And this is someone who's in college talking to like someone that isn't even in high school yet, really. Okay, or, I really or, want to know what did Chris Tyson go to college for? Because if it's psychology, then he's like fucking dead right now. Chris went to college for IT. Okay, like I didn't even know that. Like, okay, well, I mean, that makes it a bit worse. I mean, yeah, because be he knows man. how to. Yeah, well, he knows how to clear his tracks. Well, that plus like. No, oh, fuck, never mind. I just get into the kids' computers, and it's just it's fucked all around. Like, I mean, he had so many tools at his disposal. Plus, he had the backing and the fame, and he just had everything going for him. And he chose to do this. Yeah, there's just so so many levels of like, I can't Wrong. just brush this away. Like, I can't excuse it. Like, I I will like if there was a charitable option here. I would maybe look at it, but like, I can't even see a charitable option here. Like, how do I you mean, be there charitable? Is no charitability. How he do you has, be charitable he literally for someone has... in college interacting with fucking someone who's literally just entering high school, not a high school? Well, no, how can? Well, no, like, how can you? That's not like. Uh, I mean, that's just in the past, but like right now, at where Chris stands, like, how can you be charitable to a guy who literally has, like, almost all the money in the world? You know? Yeah. As as hyperbolic as that is, yeah, and access to all these people, yeah, I mean that was like the one sticking point everyone used against fucking Michael Jackson. He had all this money, he had all this power, yeah. he had all these people who would be willing to turn a blind eye. Therefore, but we actually have evidence for Chris Tyson, where for Michael Jackson, we only had stories. He was in high school. He he just joined it. Um... Oh boy, because well, what 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 I'm seeing here is he says wait till my Twitch revenue comes in, winky face. Well, yeah, Ellington, I wasn't thinking as far as that, but like, you know, being able to know what like metadata is and being able to clear metadata would be a thing is where I was thinking of. Like, that's kind of fucking not good. Um, yeah, and I mean, like the. F the fact that this third party is probably going to find traces of it. And if it happens that Mr. Beast, like, you know, knowing had other friends or was like complicit in the actions and Chris covered it up. I mean, well, you would know enough to also to like do VPNs and stuff like that. You, you know more about like what's going to capture on a network and what's not, especially. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I, I get you, Ellington. It is a bit schizophrenic to think that he's going to get into a, a kid's computer, but he was already trying to get into a kid's pants. Like <laughs> That's like a step beyond trying to get into the dude's computer. Well, so I, I wouldn't mean, put if, it past him. If they're as close as they're saying, right, I can easily believe there's some social engineering there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look, set up this web client so I can take control of your computer to fix the issue for you. Da, 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 da. Let's put this here, blah, blah, blah. And bam, I have complete access and he's not knowing. Well, not just that, but just like, hey, what's your birthday? What's your favorite color? What's, you know, what's your dream car? All the recovery questions. Mm-hmm. Here, let me suggest this password for you. It's really strong, meets all the criteria. I mean... Yeah, I just, I think about, like, all the things that he would know how to do in order to, like, at least keep himself protected or herself protected. Like, yeah. Yeah. to keep themselves protected, like, you, you, you'd know how to use, like, a VPN. You'd know to clear metadata. You'd know to, like, um, what browsers are going to, like, cover shit. Like, uh, DuckDuckGo versus, like, Chrome and stuff. Like, what keeps logs of what. 
and like clearing your histories and stuff like that like it's just not going to be as easy to catch you hey devoured yeah, how's yeah. it going thank you for coming back yo what's up <laughs> i mean so, i'm just saying like again i get what you're trying to say but like look at how far he was trying to go and it's like yeah. it's not a bridge too far in my mind <laughs> the only reason for me would be the why like what the you'd have to have a strong why to commit to commit that kind of a crime in my mind i mean covering your tracks i mean he well i mean think about it the pressure that you would get for being a pedophile would be why grooming for, yeah for a psychologically damaged person already like it's and not so much as like the why but like how much the motivation is going to hit a pressure point like that and look at how famous and how much like influence he has that alone because mm -hmm. you won't want that scandal especially if your friends mr beast what kind of hell that would rain down on jimmy which would then force his hand to rain hell down on you well like, here's, my, see that. here's my thought my my contradiction to that look at what they're doing in public and he's already groomed the person enough to where they're saying in public like this has gone on for years like if something were well, to come out thing. it would have come out in the beginning well, that's the thing, like in public, like we are, we're having to heavily speculate to get to it, but we already see like the damage is already done to the kid that he's like completely fucking brainwashed. Yeah. So anything that, yeah. any of the brainwashing shit that happened in private, that would be reason enough for him to delete. Well, yeah. And it could be one of those typical, like he's gotten away with it for so long. He feels more emboldened. Yeah. And here's the thing, like when this shit was brought up the first time around, that was probably the warning shot. And he had a whole fucking year to do it. Yeah, nobody listened to Sonny. And that that's the problem that we're dealing with. Yeah, I guess like... I could see it happening more so between like a Sonny video or like a trigger event, like a driving point of, oh shit, this is bad. Now I yeah. need to cover my tracks. But like, yeah, yes. I, I don't see anything leading up to it to think like they would, auto you automatically would go to that thought process. Yeah, because but, he's had enough time. Like this, like the beginning of the race happened a year ago, and he's like a year ahead of us and trying to catch him in his tra in his tracks. Yeah. yeah, I mean that makes more sense to me. It's like a trigger event. Why? A why? The why would then would be the sunny video coming out about Shadman, the shit coming out about Shadman, all that shit happening is then enough of a trigger event. Yeah, I agree with you now. Especially given how close he was with Shadman, so yeah. Yeah, video yeah. And dick. <laughs> I like how Devoured used the full fucking Maddie Null <laughs> description. <laughs> <laughs> dick Masterson, oh, aka just... Dax Herrera, aka Juju the Cow, the man who likes to just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just jokes guys it's just joke guys like fucking yeah. Vito and his tweets they're just jokes like i mean yeah i, I saw can see that shit. Like, like like i don't i mean i don't dismiss that as a fucking that's another fucking well, mark on the wall for me with Vito. Yeah, it's not in surprising well, no i'm gonna say this like in comparison to chris tyson and Vito, Vito's tweets where he's just actively saying like he after butt fucking a child he got like good state or crowd control like lessons from him. Like I could see that more of as a joke now compared to Chris and what he's been doing. Yeah, but it's still to me like point it's blank. Where you where do you Chris, draw the line? You know, like yeah, like that isn't so much of a joke because like number one, it doesn't follow the flow of a joke. Like what's the punchline? Other than just being a bombastic fucking retard. Well, the only reason that we are saying that these are not jokes now is because we know la Lava and we know the age of Lava here. Mm -hmm. Like, if if you thought Lava was 24 here, there would be no problem. Like, it, it would just be just fucking bullshit behavior out in public. And it's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> jokes, you know? <laughs> Devour. You don't understand anything, incel prudes. You don't message un uh, unknown underage people on the internet <laughs> just for the lulls. Ack, 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 ack. <laughs> <laughs> sending kissy faces. He's sending you a winky face. I, I don't know. And the premise is like, was that supposed to be Dick or Verkata? Because like one of those lines sounds something that Verkata would say. <laughs> Not dick. <laughs> I was kind of confused until it got to the act, act, act. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to give him enough money so you can get his nudes. 
already re really weird considering the fact that this is one of your online friends and this this massive age difference and of course it continues he says check again and he, he tags you i think at least that must be you or he's tagging you and of course he says i posted some fire nudes for you please know i don't even care like that's not a fucking joke i mean like he follows it up with please no share but again it's like it's like even if this is pretend you're playing pretend with a child yeah it's it's just it feels weird no matter how you look at it there's there's no way to like be like yeah no funny haha like and it's not like oh it's just jokes and it's like and we know that you shouldn't have like these kind of sexual charged jokes with a kid it's like but for this long and for how long it took out, this wasn't just like a high and goodbye sex joke in front of a bunch of minors. This was like a concerted effort to groom this kid to make yeah. this seem normal. Well, like it's normal enough to like do the fucking winky face, the kissy face, all this shit. Like it's it's bordering on. I mean, I, I take it as fucking flirting. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it, it's just inappropriate no matter how you look at it. And the thing that like. I call into question, it being me, is who the fuck is the fucking three people and four people that like the fucking responses here? Well, I mean, people should have taken screenshots of that before Elon got rid of the likes function to where you could see him, where it was visible. Yeah. You know, the shit that got lyrics caught in the first place. Yeah. No share. And this is someone that you're talking to that is 14 years old, that you know is 14. And at the end of the day, you cannot be talking about topics like this with someone that is this young. Even if Chris happened to not have bad intentions here, Chris shouldn't have been talking to somebody this age like that. And that's the problem, at least as of right now. Let alone that Chris is frequently on the Mr. Beast YouTube channel and in Mr. Beast videos where, you guessed it, the primary audience is little kids. But I mean, even besides that, once again, he shouldn't have been talking to this person who happens to be underage, and he most likely knew that. Keep in mind, you're bisexual, okay? You're talking to a guy that is 14 and you're in college and the premise here is you guys are joking with each other about sending nudes. That's illegal. You can't do that. And let me just say it like this. It doesn't matter if, it, if you're joking or not. Solicitation is solicitation. There should be zero discussion about anybody sending anyone who's 14 years old nudes of any kind okay i don't know i'm not quite sure if you sent this guy nudes or not for all i know this this very well could be a joke but you are talking inappropriately to a guy who is 14 years old and to a guy who you know is 14 years old and that's what i have a problem with what i have a problem okay. with here is the way that you're talking to him the fact that he's asking you um i agree with your statements there mr blue polo t-shirt guy <laughs> but you're forgetting one thing yeah this is internet land yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's an amusement park yeah. filled with a bunch of filthy fucking freaks it's a little who different will here who, who will excuse and turn a blind eye to this kind of shit you're applying real world morals on internet culture yeah oh. <laughs> I, I fuck I, I hate to like even do that as a joke because like I know there are some people who will actually believe that as an, a legit argument <laughs> yeah like oh about animated pornography and this is your one of your friends with online which by the way you shouldn't even be friends with a middle schooler to begin with because you're in college now this situation only seems to get worse and worse as we go further because on january 14th 2019 and there was this screenshot that was posted by lava now i'm not really sure where this picture came from if the uh, hide your hentai chris so i'm guessing he has a bookmark folder on his web browser for hentai that's the only thing I can, like, glean from what Lava is pointing out here. 
That's what it looks like. If Chris sent this to Lava or if Lava took this somehow or what. But it's captioned, this is a bad way to hide your hentai at Chris02. Now, as far as I'm aware, that is Chris, even though it's a different handle. But yeah, no, it's just so weird that in context to Chris, this Lava guy is constantly like pointing out that, oh, this is a bad way to hide your hentai. Oh, does she know about your crippling hentai addiction? And just things like that. It's, it's just so weird. Let alone that in 2019, this would have made Lava around 15 years old. Another screenshot of a tweet that was obtained by Prism here is from November 11th, 2019, and it's replying to Chris and Gamer Subs. And Lava said, I love how I set that embed up so it shows you looking sexy. Kind of a weird comment to be making, especially after all of the Wait, things that, that we just went over. Here we go. I, yeah, November. Oh, great. Okay, so. So this yeah, would be that, late that would in have 2019. Been, that would have been after the Shadman expose. Yeah. That would have been after he drew Keemstar's daughter. I don't know if like that would be right after he drew Lieutenant whatever her their Corbis. name was. Yeah. Yeah, Corbus. Like what the fuck? Especially after all of the things that we just went over and the things that we still have yet to go over. But yeah, I don't know. On February 14th, 2020, Lava tweeted at Chris02, will you be my Valentine? Winky face emoji. Like, I don't know what friends do this. Like, even if it's like a normal friendship and it's not like some weird seven year age gap friendship. But like, what normal friendship is constantly like this? And I mean, with the given context that Chris was bisexual at the time and still might be bisexual, on top of all the other things that have came out like this is highly suspicious here's some unrelated Again, replies this <laughs> the fucking defenses oh he's trans don't talk about it oh he's bisexual don't talk about it well at this point it looks like a cover-up now uh, no no like i mean at this point it seems like it's true given how much like vocal support they've been getting yeah it's like i mean we used to criticize the far-right republicans like the like the uh conservative christian core of like using a slippery slope fallacy it's like oh if you let gay marriage go through then people will be marrying dogs and then like, there'll be butt fucking in the streets and uh what happened uh, <laughs> well mean, you got people fucking dogs and butt fucking in the streets for fucking pride parade and shit uh... like that like i, I mean it, it's just like you're proving the people that hate you the most right whereas us the people who are willing to understand we're being left with a fucking hand of fucking bullshit. Yeah. And there's no way to defend you. I just, this is like blatant fucking grooming. It's like on Christmas day, no less. Yeah. Thank you, dad. Be my Valentine, Heart. the dad, the pet name shit, the fucking, the outright flirting. Like this, this was uh, somebody who, oh my God. Like this, this kid is in fucking deep and anyone who goes at him for like still defending, like just be aware. This is like heavy, like fucking programming. Like you like, can, like, I, I mean, it's immoral to go at him. Like regardless if he tries to have people flag your channel or whatnot, like the dude is mentally ill. There's a whole even different side of this. Like wasn't fucking Chris married? Yeah. Yeah. He was married. Oh, he up he and abandoned his family actually. Yeah, he up and abandoned his family. I mean, I mean, this is like right around the time when like the kid was well, not right around the time, but it should have been close when like he came out as trans and then he had his like baby son and like high heels and shit like that, like shoes yeah. that fit the baby and everything. It, it's like this dude was married. He was his wife should have been pregnant around this time. Yeah, that's that's and the part he, that I'm like thinking about here is like. This this guy's married with the kid on the way, talking to an underage kid. Like, who has custody of the fucking kid right now? The mom. Yeah, she has full custody. God. She has full custody. I don't even know if he has visitation. I think he has. I'm pretty sure. He, and that's yeah, it. I'm, well, I'm like, pretty sure he has regular visitation, not supervised. Yeah, I would change that. I would change I, that I, if I were them. Like. From uh, yeah. what I understood is they have supervised now because of all the shit that came out with like Yeah. Badman and stuff. I think they did like a emergency hearing from what I understood. Because it could be a recent update because I haven't looked into like the marriage situation until like a like a year ago is like when I saw it and it was just regular visitation. It could have changed. 
I'm hoping Ooh. it did. God damn it, this shit's bothering me. Buddy, and you're not gay, and you don't have feelings for them, and you just have a normal friendship, say like you're a 20 year old, and you got some friends from high school that you still talk to that are around the ages of 19 to 25, just for a little bit of context there. Do you guys talk in this way? Do ya? Because I can tell you right now, I don't talk to my friends like this, but I guess also at the same time, I'm not really friends with minors, so. But yeah, no, this is oddball behavior. This is another unrelated tweet that was made on May 12, 2018, and this was Chris Chris responding to Lava, and Chris said, thanks, Lava, love ya. Now, moving a little bit further on, I mean, if I'm Chris right now, how in okay. the hell do I explain Prior that? Prior context removed. Prior context removed. That seems like a normal tweet. Like That you know, could be, yeah. Fans. Yeah. But with everything that we've seen so far, it I, calls that into question. The one thing I will say is that it's out of context as far as date timeline goes because yeah. everything we'd seen up to that point we had gotten up to like 2020 and so it's like that goes back to 2018 so it's going back two years in the past like so i i, I don't know yeah i think we could give him a pass just given on the timeline thing but everything that followed after fuck no no Lava put out a tweet and said, Chris bullies me. And then he attached a screenshot of some pinned Discord messages with him and Chris. And Lava says, practice with this, at Chris the meme god. And it's a banana, right? And I think we all know what that signifies right there. And this was February of 2019, by the way. Two days before Lava sent this in whatever Discord this is, Chris sent an image and captioned it, Lava's mom tomorrow. Like, what the fuck, Chris? What the actual fuck? This kid is how old again? This kid? It it's a kid? and your owl like okay you could easily say that this is a joke and whatnot but these are definitely not things you should be sending to minors when you are an adult like again it's oddball behavior now it looks like a month before that on january 13th 2019 and i know the timeline is like all over the place here but on january 13th 2019 chris tweeted out lava gs's stream and said my friend lava gs is live on twitch go spam lobster in the chat now i really wouldn't say that this is too bad despite the fact that chris has the seven year age gap for friendship with the person who he's shouting out here. Now, as we all know, Chris is a little bit of a memer, so on March 4th, 2017, he put up a screenshot of what looks like to be a message on a 4chan post, if that's what they call them. I've never been on 4chan. Or this could be Reddit. I don't know which one it is, but it's a post from Anonymous, and it says, objectively, the easiest way to prevent a R-word is to start consenting. Yeah, I was going to say, that looks like green text. Right? What can I say, guys? Chris is just the meme god. Am I right? Now, I really doubt this has anything to do with lava, but still. Interesting meme you got there, Chris. Now, anyways, moving on. It doesn't really seem like there's too much proof of this, but Prism goes on to talk about how, allegedly, Chris and Lava met up. Because if you guys are unaware, Lava is from West Virginia, and Chris is from North Carolina. And if you don't know anything about that, and how close those oh, states no. are to each other, well, yeah, they're actually not too far away away from each other and it would Jesus be super Christ. easy to drive over to that state in like a few hours now i'm not saying that anything happened these are allegations and prism is about to do the talking here but if this actually did happen that would have been the most insane disgusting thing to ever happen regarding chris tyson and once again i'm not saying it happened because i don't know but if some weird shit like that did happen it 100 percent is over for chris tyson i have no idea if this guy if anything happened to this guy physically I can only show that they're talking about inappropriate topics with each other. I can show that there is a vast age difference that he should not have been socializing with this guy in the first place, but he did. And the fact that he was able, like the moment he was able to meet up with him, he met up with him in person, which I think is highly inappropriate since he was talking to this guy since he was 13. And he's also attracted to men and the guy's a guy. It's highly inappropriate. The circumstances he showed up in is inappropriate. Here we go. So this one's in Carl's server. Right here. It's a it's a Discord messaging. Discord messaging. He said, I love Carl though. I drove from West Virginia to North wait Carolina. A minute, wait a minute. I'm sitting in a camper in the woods right now. I love Carl though. So Carl Carl is amazing, and that is a fact. True. He hugged me before Chris managed to. Carl sleep. I'm just friends with Carl. I don't need mod. His mod team is already top notch. Why do you want to come to North Carolina? Because winky face, winky face. 
Carl simps for me. Who doesn't simp for Carl? I think we all simp for Carl. I know, right, Teehee? Offering to buy me ice cream if I do stuff for him. Why do you want to come to North Carolina? And money. Who's the deleted user? I have no idea. Because it seems like they're like in on the quote unquote joke. If I missed something. That could be either Chris himself or it could be another one of those, you know, fans that he went after and they like knew yeah. Chris liked them both and shit because I just, I don't know. That seems really off to me. Yeah. God, I wish they would have gotten the metadata off that account. Would have been easier to track. I mean, hell, even just the serial, the snowflake ID number would have been good. Yeah. Sneak me away from New York to North Carolina, that's why. Carl simps for me. Who doesn't simp for Carl? Boy Jedi, why do you want to hide in my suitcase? Sneak me away from North to New York to North Carolina, that's why. Who, wait, who is older, Lava or Boy Jedi? You're both 16, right? I'm 16. Car Jedi 16. Carl reading all the simping, like... At Carl, see you Tuesday, baby girl. I'm in a camper on a hot spot. Imagine being in the woods. Imagine simping over Carl. And of course, and of course, here is the Steam account of Chris Tyson. It is Estrogen Dealer. And God, God this is it. as bad as fucking Bob's posting. This okay. Is, this is worse than Bob's Weird. posting. That's like putting it out there right in the fucking open. Like, I mean, just, again, the fucking memes. It's the Steam account like, hold on. of Chris I mean, Tyson. Like, hold on. If you wanted to fucking parody Bob's posting, that would be the name and that would be the picture you would use. And, you know, I hate to even speculate on this, but fucking Carl? I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I don't want to even want to say this idea, but given how, like, there's even worse stuff and everyone knew it has been the thing that's been the fucking tagline for this story as of late. I wonder if Carl is about as guilty as Chris. Yeah. Probably at this point. Like Because I mean, it seems like when it, when they're talking about this in this one situation, it's like Carl, Chris, Carl, simping for Carl is like Chris. It's just like I don't know. It just it, like given everything we know now. Yeah. It is estrogen dealer. I, I wouldn't be surprised to be honest. I mean, and I wouldn't they be surprised are friends if, with each other. I mean, if, Lava Chris, if Chris is like in the trans community, they had to have crossed paths even at this point. If he's going under estrogen dealer, yeah. Like I mean, yeah. He he would have been doing it in secret behind everyone's back. So I would not be surprised because from what I'm from what I'm seeing here, he was basically grooming children to be in like this gay relationship with him. Yeah, I haven't seen anything that would like you know hint at pink pilling outside of like this estrogen dealer name yes and chris tyson and as you can see here uh the games that they played it matches up with the the tweets that they made and as you can see mangled pickle is also on there it matches up with the tweets that they made now this one that, again uh... he's gonna have to explain so this guy is super young, right? He's been talking to him since he was super young, 13 years old. So why is it that not only are you DMing this guy on Twitter, you're Snapchatting this guy, you're talking one-on-one -on -one in a voice chat with this guy, but the kind of Snapchats that, you, that you're sending, this is the Snapchat that you sent. He said, I get weird snap from Chris. And it's a picture of him making a weird face next to an American flag. And it says, coming for America. Now, you might think that, oh, man, this must be some weird uh, 4th of July joke. Nope, it's not 4th of July. You can clearly see the date right there. This guy would have been like uh, 15 at this point. Oh. And uh, why sending a 15-year-old a message saying, coming for America? Why are you DMing a 15 year old anyways on Snapchat? Why are you doing that? Why are you DMing this guy who you've been talking to since he was 13 on Snapchat?
So yeah, we're definitely going to need some clarification <laughs> or hard. something like, like Chris has been for the longest time. This needs to be something that Chris is going to address head on like right now, because after I put up this video, which I mean, it's already up if you're listening to it right now, it really wouldn't surprise me if everybody hops onto this and it becomes a huge thing just purely based off of how the last video did. So if I'm Chris right now, I'm addressing this. I'm proving that, oh, this didn't happen or it didn't happen the way that it did happen or whatever, or I'm at least saying something. I don't know because you can't just be silent about something like this like there's been so much shit that has been shown of you being weird and having inappropriate conversations with at least one minor you being into lolly and now apparently there are allegations of you meeting up with a 15 or 16 year old in the woods back when you were 24 or 25 like Chris if you're watching this because I really wouldn't be surprised if you're watching it you need to come out and say whatever you can and say at least something especially if you didn't do this because I mean you already look bad enough. Having allegations of you meeting up with a minor potentially is not going to make you look any better. They're talking about profile pictures. He said he put his profile picture as Chris Tyson from Mr. Beast. And if, if here's another Twitter message. Or sorry, here's another Discord message. He said Chris DM'd me on Twitter asking me to come help him on Beast's stream. Another one, right, and here's one a screenshot of Chris Tyson talking to this guy. This ain't true. And this screenshot is Chris Tyson talking one-on-one -on -one with him. And at this point, he would have been 16. And here we go. Here is the picture of them meeting up together. I'm gonna censor his face. And as you can see right there, there there's Carl right there. There's Chris Tyson right there. Chris Tyson was talking to this guy since he was 13. Chris Tyson was in college. And of course, the moment he was able to drive, he takes a camper van out in the middle of the woods. So yeah, that essentially confirms that they met up. Now, I'm not really too sure if the parents were okay with this or how this really went. But we have Lava here saying in Discord DMs that apparently he's taking a camper van to a very secluded area in the woods to meet up with Chris or the Mr. Beast crew. And then we get pictures on Lava GS's Instagram with him and Chris and other Mr. Beast members. So yeah, it's very apparent that they did meet up in one way or another. I don't know if anything happened or what i really hope nothing bad happened but yeah just given the way that he's been talking to this guy and how chris was into lolly and stuff like that definitely not a good look at all and people are definitely going to be questioning this meetup now i decided to do a little bit of research to find this now, instagram page and i was at i just kind of want to point this out because if the next defense for like fucking Chris Tyson is going to be, there's no way how he could have been into boys. He was into little girls because Lolly. It's like, I mean, the dude's bisexual. Because, I mean, like the running joke for Michael Jackson for the longest time, if you watch Norm MacDonald, is like, he's not just a pedophile, he's a gay pedophile and whatnot. Yeah. So you know, it's like, if you, yeah, if you, I mean, if you, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, Norm MacDonald was like you know, brilliant with that, but. I mean, it's just like the amount of fucking cope defenses people are going to go to. It's grasping at straws. It's moving the goalposts. He's done. Like, there's no defending this. And if you're going to tie it to the trans, like, argument, you're fucking over yourself more than, like, you are helping him. Just don't. Yeah, you're going to screw the trans community over. But if you if you rewind it back to that group picture, does that not look like the biggest group of soy people ever? Yeah, I was going to mention something about, like, how they're all holding hands and the way how they're doing it. It's like, Chris is like, got his pinky tied around the kid's pinky, and then fucking Carl is, like, holding, like, the other part of his hand or something. Yeah, it's, it, it's just, what? I mean, all of this makes me uncomfortable, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Patrick is slowly dying. Like, mm. this is... I'm so uncomfortable like, covering it's, it's this. It's like, gross. It's fucking gross. Well, the like, part that gets me is just that it's so out in the open that it still begs the question of, like, we've not seen any private DMs. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing, Pat. Uh, it's like everyone turned a blind eye in this situation, and it's gross and it's out in the open. But you know what else was out in the open? Uh, Thomas Matthew Crooks, and no one did fuck all about that until, like, after the shit went bad. Mm-hmm. 
I hate to draw that fucking parallel, but there seems to be a lot of that happening as of late. Yeah, it's just like, God, like any any standalone portion of this is bad, let alone the totality of it. That's yeah. That then when it all ties together, it's just deplorable. And how many of these people knew it? Not a single person spoke up. Yeah, I'm dying a bit on the inside, devoured. <laughs> Like, I just, yeah, there's, there's so much here that's, like, fucking just it's beyond deplorable. gross. Deplorable. It really is. Only going to be questioning this meetup. Now, I decided to do a little bit of research to find this Instagram page, and I was actually able to find it. And currently, it's on private, meaning that you have to follow it to see what's in there, to see what the person posted, but it has the same profile picture and everything. And you can see the age that he provided. It says 20. And then since I actually happen to follow Chris on Instagram, I really don't use Instagram too much, but since I happen to follow Chris on Instagram, it says followed by Chris Tyson. So yeah, we're definitely going to need some answers when it comes down to this because I'm really not too sure what exactly happened but the allegations are incredibly damning and it really is not a good look Chris Tyson I know there's gonna be people who see this video and they're gonna be like Chris is a p-word like a pedo or like a groomer we don't know that that's not what I want you guys to say because it's not 100% confirmed but I just wanted to bring this whole situation to light because I feel like more people should know about this and the shady behavior that Chris has engaged in in the past and I would really love to see a response from Chris about this I mean, because this is damning and it doesn't in fairness to Brion here like he's had his own like you know pedophile allegations brought against himself that's pretty much the only reason why he's saying any of this okay but when it's but when you put all the fucking jigsaw pieces of the puzzle it paints a really fucking like sick black and white picture, picture. yeah yeah, yeah. You know so I like you didn't even need to pull back here no is what I'm trying to say like dude if it, no, if this it is just like a, a case of, like, lay the evidence out there and let people decide what they want at this fucking point. Yeah. You know what this it's... reminds me of? What? Tipster. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I'm serious, because remember when he was on with Keemstar and Pat God, they were like, why is this art weird? It's like, well, I, it's not my kind of art. It's a little weird, but, like, why is it weird, Tipster? And he couldn't say it? Mm-hmm. It kind of feels like that. Like, he's not a pedophile, but this is extremely weirdly inappropriate with a minor. Like, yeah, it's like, like, just say the word. And again, it's like... But I can understand, is, like, like, if you've had that word weaponized against you, not wanting to default to that word. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I get where he's come from. I just wish that some of these people wouldn't be as fucking timid. Like, I mean... If you've been called that, you know it's fucking bullshit and their evidence is flimsy and it's like nonsensical. You don't have to hold back for Chris Tyson when the evidence is like so overmounted. So, yeah. yeah. It's like, like it's about as black and white as those pages that one dude printed out, like literally. <laughs> I, and, that, and that's my point, you, right? Like, like yeah, it, I'm just it's so apparent. Yeah, I, the, the main theme for me, like from all this, I'm tired of the fucking people who want to preach down to us, like, pulling their punches over this shit. Yeah. It, it's just cowardice in the face of the absolute truth of the situation. Like, no amount of excuses or, like, counter evidence, like, you know, other factual evidence that's been verified. Like, the shit is, is that he did commit a crime. Whether or not he's going to get charged for it is, like, you know, a non-issue at this point because statute of limitations. Well, like, what... What can you even from, use from, to counter from, this? Like, I was going through the nun school at the time. Like, <laughs> I was I was involved in the priesthood. Sorry. Like, I took a vow of celibacy. Like, that doesn't even, like, the fuck? It's like, you were already married, too, so you were cheating on your wife with this kid. Yeah, which is, like, yeah. brings a whole other level of disgust that I was thinking about the whole fucking time when we were talking about that. Like, can you imagine how that you woman had... has to feel? Yeah, and you were you were going you had a kid on the way, so you were actively sexualizing a minor. Uh, and you have while, a kid. Like Yeah, and you're about to be a father yourself. It's like or well, whatever. It, it's just like <laughs> a parent. This is yeah, this is why the, the, the whole pronoun game should not be adhered to. Because it's just like the fucking Christian situation 
where he fucked his mom and the people are like she and it's like fuck off it's easier for people to understand why like like what exactly happened here we don't need the fucking minutia in order to call someone out yeah well again it's one of those situations where like again the transitioning and everything even took place over all of this because like there's clearly that picture of the coming for america mm-hmm. that was clearly chris is a man so like I, I honestly even beyond that like you can sit there and say like okay like it i i don't think it fucking matters here he or she yeah, like it's like, fucking disgusting that and again it's like you want to like just take the idea of like the trans movement or just like trans people in general yeah. they want to be accepted by society however you're committing a crime in which you have to repay a debt to society for sorry but if we misgender you like that's part of your punishment also going to jail also losing all credibility all your money all your fame everything being a fucking a a, a, a person that needs to be mocked and shamed like that's all the aspects of repaying your debt to society as a whole when you break one of the laws, especially of a sexual fucking nature that is going to be ever fucking persistent. I I have never heard like a fucking argument as to where we need to treat them with respect outside the fucking basics, which is like not shanking, punching or causing any bodily harm to them when they're in police custody, when they're in jail. Or anything like that. Yeah, I Because just... you know how... It's like, we all know how it ends for these types in there. Do you really think that the person who's in the cell is going to respect the, the pronouns of Chris Tyson when they've got, like, a fucking carved toothbrush going into their chest? No, I, I honestly... I almost wish the fucking uh, Hutchison or whatever the fuck the guy's name was that Jim and I were talking about the one night... The guy who got busted and was killed in prison. Like, I almost wish that death for him at this point. Like, or her. Like, I don't even give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't have hate towards trans people. It's just that when you make these absurd fucking arguments and you have the activists making these absurd fucking demands out of you when this is part of the fucking process of repaying your debt to society, like, you basically almost lose all personhood to a certain extent. You don't have freedoms. You don't have certain privileges or even respect. You committed a crime. That's why I don't believe in the fucking argument when it came to Christian and respecting his pronouns. This is this is the shit that I'm talking about, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> right. Yeah, right in here. On uh, October 13th, 2019, Fitzgerald went into Huckle's cell, tied him up, raped him assaulted him with various weapons before strangling him with an electrical cord. Fitzgerald was jailed for 34 years for Huckle's murder, uh, has spoken to prison staff, and has said he's had extremely violent fantasies. Uh, This Fitzgerald guy was actually a rape victim, a a sodomized child when he was younger. And Huckle, this guy, went down for one of the biggest fucking pedophile rings in history. Actually, some of the stuff that's been tied to fucking uh, Scully. It was, to who? Uh, Scully, Peter Scully. Daisy's Destruction oh. Scully. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and this guy was, like, bragging about it and everything else, and this guy, Fitzgerald, Paul Fitzgerald, kept telling him, make him stop. Tell him to shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear the shit. And they didn't. And they didn't listen. And uh, He solved it. He took care of it. Yep. He's, he no longer has to worry about that guy talking. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, and I hate to like having to remind people of that shit because it should be basic fucking knowledge. Because I mean, social contracts within a society, it should be understood and assumed that that's how this is going to play out. No amount of hand wringing and pushback is going to like convince people otherwise, unless if they just don't want to fucking deal. I just this shit's just so beyond inexcusable, to be honest. Like I. It's beyond inexcusable on multiple parts. It's beyond inexcusable by Tyson, by any adult that was in that fucking Discord, by fucking Mr. Beast crew. Like, there's there's so many levels here of, like, failures for this one person who doesn't even feel they're, they're groomed, but let alone there's other fucking people. 
Yeah. And we know that they've had, like, a long history. So, like, did you just not feel like you were groomed because, like, you had that much time with him? Yeah, I and, think that's like, honestly the, it. Like, they feel like they had a relationship. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. well, it's, it's like that typical, like, he's my friend. He didn't, yeah, he well, might have, you know, I, I think this is even really, but he's my friend. I you think know? this even like, hit a level of romantic just judged on the shit that, again, we saw publicly. Like, I think this is literally, like, a relationship this would be like uh, someone saying that oh this teacher you know raped these kids and shit mm-hmm. and then it's coming out later on and it's like no i graduated we were we had a relationship like well, it's like that you know, one teacher i i forget her name but she slept with her student she went to jail they end up getting together after she got out and they're still together to this day like 20 years later yeah yeah um i was gonna also bring up like another example from the right wing um milo yiannopoulos yeah oh yeah milo, yeah yeah you remember the scandal that he got into that torpedoed his career where he was defending priests you know having sex with uh altar boys and everything because yeah. that happened to him because yeah. he said he loved it it was a good experience for him and everybody was like oh hell no yeah yeah it's like he's completely damaged from that point of view but he was making arguments in the favor of it that's how damaged he was. I can see a similar situation with uh, lava here uh, just playing out, but on the opposite end of like, you know, the political spectrum, because I yeah. have to assume given how young he is and given like, you know, Chris Tyson and what he is, it, it's lefty. So yeah. this is quite literally the inverse of the Milo Yiannopoulos situation. You know, I can see it. I, I just totally feel so that. bad for this kid because he's obviously so fucked up that, like, he doesn't even realize. Yeah. I mean, I felt bad for Milo when he said that to him, like, because I didn't even know he was, like, molested, but apparently he had bring it up as, like, a point of, like, contention every time. It's like, hello, I'm Milo Leonopolis. I was molested by a priest kind of thing. Like, it was almost but, like a bit. Yeah, like, almost like it was a bit, but when he, like, went in to argue about it seriously, I'm like, holy shit, you're damaged. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, like that, those scars run deep. Uh, it, it just, it, it kind of floors me that we're to that point to where we actually have like this as being brought up as a legit argument now when like just five years ago, it was like, because they're not five years, like maybe even six, because I think it happened in 2018, uh, the Milo thing, because it happened yeah. near like the end of Drunken Peasants, because that's when he was debating it. Well, like... Um, there's a whole nother side of this, not to interrupt you too, that, but I just want to mention, like, if you're, uh, if you're in the trans community and you're a trans activist of any fucking sorts, and you're sitting there and you're, def- you're arguing on behalf of Chris Tyson in any way, shape or form right now, you should stop what the fuck you're doing, turn around and you need to be arguing in favor of this fucking victim because you better fucking hope that this fucking person doesn't radicalize right because they will give every fucking righty the fucking all the ammunition you could fucking want for why oh, trans yeah. people are bad i mean hell even with him being delusional they're using it like that but which, i'm just saying like i mean i mean i don't blame them for taking the opportunity but like the politics of it is like fucking damaging like beyond like repair yeah this is this is the shit where you cut your losses you shut the fuck up and you actually like assist the victim and show them that, like, all trans people are not like this. Like, that's the best you can hope for right now. Because if this person ever changes their political views or the right person gets in their ears, you're fucked. This, this is the shit like, that's easily used to fucking lose rights for you. You want the fucking situation? Here you go. Yeah, because, I mean, regardless of the argument that they've been pushing the envelope for years, it's just, like, this would be, like, I don't even want to use it in this term, but good karma for what you're arguing like, I mean, how should I put this? The we all know that there are insanes on like left and left and right spectrums. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to a singular issue, one that is so contestable like this, what we're what we're seeing right now is the same thing that happened with abortion rights. It got so fucking contested, and there were so many fucking like pity stories, and there were so many criminal stories that it created a powder keg to be used as a political wedge. For the next 80 or well not 80 but like 60 years do you really want that yeah like it's 
I just I, I just wanted to lay it out that black and white. Like I I don't I'm very fucking um I'm not gonna be disrespectful or anything, like, but at the same time, like you're just as abhorrent as Chris Tyson if you are a trans person sticking up for Chris Tyson right now. I mean And it's like only gonna hurt your movement. It's yes. only gonna hurt your yourself. Like this is one of those things when people say like about it, you need to start policing this. Yeah, and it's kind of like to bring it to a different like subject that runs the same theme, like of doing damage to yourself and like your community. Like back during um what's his name? Not was it Ted Bundy, the rapist? Uh and murderer. Bundy Casey. Not not uh, I'm talking about the one that went after like college. Oh, college there's and um broke there's out of the co ed killer. Uh I well don't that know. was in like that was in like uh, South by Southwest. I'm talking about like um the one who had like the crazy stare, he tried arguing his case in court like he represented himself. And yeah, got the I think Bundy. Chair. I think that you're talking about Bundy. Okay, yeah. there were like a lot of women gave him a pass, even though he would be the thing that you know feminist rights activists would be arguing against having in society. Yeah, there's a specific term. It's kind of like born out of the Bonnie and Clyde situation where they where women are attracted to a criminal. However, this is like, you know, one of those kinds of situations where you push so hard for someone's innocence that you end up basically doing more damage in the long run. Yeah, because Ted Bundy was one of those examples when it came to, you know, date rape and like so many other things. Yeah, like there was just... like you want to have like a scare to happen. Defending Chris Tyson against any of the shit is going to create it. Yeah, I, I get, mean, I get what you're of... talking about, because I remember with Bundy, there was the whole stereotype of the, the crazy deranged fucking dude. And he was the well-groomed guy. And like mm -hmm. everyone talks about like that guy looks like he's crazy, like he's a fucking rapist or whatever. And it's like, no, here here ends up like being the the tall, dark, handsome guy, and he's the actual fucking things that go bump in the night. He was the one that's literally fucking killing people. And it's yeah, yeah, I mean, his, yeah. his his stylings were used for like American Psycho yeah. a little bit. Or at least just the qualities of who of what he looked like. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it, it was different from fucking Ed Kemper and stuff like that, where he's this big, tall behemoth, like, looks like he can break you no problem. This was the guy that came along with a smile and a knife behind his back. Like, he yeah, literally, Ed yeah, Kemper, well, yeah. Ed Kemper was the co-ed killer. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, but, like, um, in, contra in contrast, like, Ed Kemper would be the kind of guy, as a female, you would be told to be afraid of. Yeah. Like, versus the Ted Bundy, who literally had, like, the fucking death Volkswagen and shit like yeah where he'd have like fake cast pretend feigning yeah. an injury and everything yeah it's like that's that's what i'm trying to point out is like do yeah. not defend the wolves and sheep's clothing when the when the fucking mask has been slipped yeah, like, yeah I, I get what you're saying now with that but it's like yeah I, I agree i agree like this is one of those things it's just it's so indefensible because again yeah. like everything we've seen here is in public shit whether it's public discord or it's public tweets and shit like that. And it begs the question and begs the bigger concern of what happened in private to begin these feelings. Like this didn't all happen out in public. Yeah. And I, again, like this is kind of like a bigger debate that I've been having with some people behind the scenes, um, that not online, but in real life, it's like, who would you rather have like run a country? Would you rather have a scientist or an engineer? <laughs> because a scientist will run up your budgets trying to come up with programs and ideas that in theory would work whereas yeah. an engineer is more practical i don't know you and i both worked in automotive <laughs> 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 but the way how it parallels into this is like the old sayings is don't don't judge a book by its cover yeah but at the same time that's like saying, oh, turn a blind eye here or there. It could just be a misunderstanding. And I hate for that to happen with this yeah. Chris Tyson situation. Because they've already used that as like an excuse. Like, oh, it was jokes. At what point does it not be jokes? Like, what point does it have to get for, to be not be jokes? 
Like straight up well, fucking CSAM, CSAM shit? Well, that's kind of what I was saying. It's like, like earlier, like, you know, you say you're not a victim. Well, at that point, is it you're only a victim if you're molested? Like, yeah. is everything leading up to that completely fine? Yeah. Yeah. If, as long as it's it. under the guise of it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Like, so it's like, where do we, you know, start then? Yeah. You know? I mean, we have to start at the beginning quite literally like any of these moves that chris was making like he should have been kiboshed then and there yeah sort of like the i love you like i feel like that's again like we talked about that like in the totality of everything yes it's suspect on its own like no i wouldn't say that's like a fucking case for like get the rope in the tree like <laughs> yeah because for that comment he's like thanks like or yeah, it's like thank you, Lava. Love you because yeah. Lava was doing something for him, and he's thanking him, and it's just like an overabundance of appreciation is how that would be interpreted. Yeah, well, yeah, because that's like I, that's what I say to my friends all the time, like love you, like yeah. you know what I mean, like that nothing, but given the totality you know, like, of everything else in context, yeah, yeah, you have to look at it differently. Like I just. <sighs> Are we so blind to nuance that, like, we literally have to wait for the Leia situation? Well, that's I mean, one of those things. It's like, wh where do we, where, where do we start with like the, this is not acceptable. Like, do we have to wait until like there's an actual like blood on someone's hands? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hyperstrophilia devoured. That's uh, that's the term I was looking for from the Bonnie and Clyde shit, where women become attracted to criminals. Oh man. All right. Well, I'm gonna finish this out. So disgusted. Not make Chris look good at all. Now, as for the rest of Prism's video here, if you want to watch the whole thing, that was around like 27 minutes, I think, of Prism's video. But pretty much for the rest of it, Prism just made a statement and he explained why he was doing this and why he spread this information. And he also made it very clear that he has no ill will for BW, aka Lava. He just wanted to spread this information and bring some light to this situation and the pattern of weird behavior that Chris has had in the past. So, yeah, for the people who would like to watch his full video i went over the main majority of everything but for those people i will be leaving a link to his video down in the pinned comment down below so if you guys want to go check that out feel free to and uh yeah like i said this video was not made to call chris tyson anything like insane like a pedo groomer predator or anything bad like that it was just to bring this very concerning information to light and i figured i should cover this too since i already covered the lolly stuff from two days ago so yeah i guess with that all being said i'm going Going to be wrapping up the video right there thank you guys so much for watching if you happen to enjoy the video make sure you like comment and subscribe because doing so will help promote the all right <laughs> i'm done i'm done yeah let's call it for tonight <laughs> oh. oh my god that was so awful yeah it, it's it's one of those things that it just makes me sick even like talking about it because like if something like that would have happened to like would happen to my kid and i would see these people like you know well what what really you know what bad happened i don't know my fucking kid was having inappropriate conversations like looking yeah. at it as like a parent like if i if my kid was in the position lava is in i would be like you would have to hold me back you would have to leave where you're living and hold me back because i would be outright like rapid yeah i mean again like this is just fucking nuts to me i mean the hold back like the fucking just stand down stand by we don't know everything it, it's just fucking bullshit to me because the people who are in the know and know what they know yeah it, it's just like and people who know this shit like the back of their hand like i do it's like i don't see that as like you know advisable like you have everything to go at this guy yeah and it's just going to keep piling on i mean for a situation like brie owns like when he was being accused by kumo like it was like tacit information none of it made fucking sense he was grasping at straws and then there's the age difference 18 17 and i'm like you've got to be fucking kidding me like didn't we already agree yeah. like the call me carson situation was a fucking failure because of the age range alone yeah like again it's just no internal consistency from the commentary community or any of these people that's what's so fucking frustrating 
Well, like, I, I've i voiced, I think, my point pretty fucking well on this. Like, I, I honestly think that it's it's beyond inexcusable, like, for you to try and be trans and be behind this. I think you should be totally against this. Like, it's the only good position you could have on this. As far as, like, I mean, commentary hell, if... people, like, I, I, Keffel should be, like, fucking burn Chris Tyson at a stake right now. Yeah, I mean, for ulterior motives of course she would yeah but, but the end result it's would like, be the same like yeah like it's kind of why i get a chuckle when lyrics is going after like ricky berwick because like he was fucking around with shad man over yeah. the, because of the lolly shit yeah it's like <laughs> it's like motherfucker just because you have like friends now who are willing to back you does not mean you have the political capital to fucking expend on ricky berwick of all people by that right, why weren't you sitting there calling out Mama Max as being a uh, a pedophile sympathizer for sitting there with fucking uh, Craig Beckett mm -hmm. and yeah. working with Craig Beckett? Yeah. So I, where do you... Again, it's the hypocrisy angle of all of this. Yeah. It's, it's why I say, like, I'm not the one who's playing team sports. You fuckers are. Well, yeah, like, if it's, if this was your kid, your little brother, your little sister, would you have the same energy? Because if you would, then I feel bad for your sibling. Just, I just feel so disgusted for Lava. Like, to have fucking people sitting there saying shit about you now, because you're not playing with them. You're not playing ball with the people that want to go after this stuff. And so they're going after you, and then the people that just don't give and the a people fuck. who are going after him just don't even understand that he's not in the mental fucking headspace to actually do it like no. that's a legitimate that's a legitimate use of like i'm in the wrong headspace kind of excuse because the kid was fucking groomed yeah like the the programming is there it's fucking self-evident it's like milo all over again well yeah because that's exactly what happens when you're groomed like it's so painfully obvious that this is like one of the few times that you can say somebody's groomed someone on the platform yeah it's like night and day it's black and white just by looking at how lava has acted on this yeah yeah and it's and now now you're gonna hold back now now you're gonna not say anything like i i can't it's because they've never had a situation like this that's probably why they're 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 treading new territory yeah, like an actual like grooming allegation. Yeah, like I just, uh, I just don't understand like how you could like even in any way be like no, this could come out well for Chris. 